Well, this is like no other stream I've done, but it's a thing that uh, I think we need to do it. I think we need to have a chat, guys. Welcome. I'm just going to talk, answer questions, talk about Victoria 3, talk about the leaks, talk about it all. It's time to have a discussion, everyone. What's up? Hi. So in order to do this stream, so I can have my uh, my name highlight when I'm talking, up in the top left, I'm actually sitting in my Discord channel, a Discord voice channel, alone, talking to myself, just to get the thing to highlight. Because I mean, I don't have a face cam, and I probably never will, so I need to have some activity going on on the screen. You know, one half the chat, the other half my schizo Discord voice talking to myself. Did your channel get a copy strike? Yes, it did. Um, you get three copy strikes and they destroy your channel. I've got one, they expire after three months. I think it's a hit I'm willing to take. So, I, I mean, I won't get another one, that's for sure. I'll definitely tone it down, but I'm willing to take one for the team. What a turbulent few days it's been with all this happening. Really didn't expect them to acknowledge the leak. Pfft, I, have they? I don't think they have. They've just sort of deleted every mention of it. Uh, the Reddit thread went down, the Paradox forum thread went down, and they got my video down. They're just clamping down on it. Understandable in a way. I'm not going to talk shit about what they're doing, to be honest. I don't know what I would do in their position, probably the same. But I'm doing what I'm doing, for my position. And that is life. Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with his war. Thanks, Bowel. Bowel shaking earthquake, you he gifted a sub to the uh, an account called Azov Battalion in my last stream. And now he's gifted a sub to Paradox Interactive. Uh, someone make a joke linking the two, uh, But yeah, thank you for the gifted sub though. I mean, I'm sure Paradox Interactive will really appreciate that. What about freedom of speech? Um, in terms of them putting down my video? Well, I'm going to take the cringy thing you might have heard, but you know, private companies can do what they want. So, and I, I have to sign certain terms and agree to certain rules when I make my videos on YouTube and use their platform. Copyright is a very big part of it. I might disagree with a lot of what copyright is in general, but the place has rules and I obey them. Or I get copyright strikes. Also on this stream, I might reveal the big idea that I had for another Victoria 3 footage video before this happened, if I thought I could get away with it. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i tell you the idea that can't happen now, but I mean, I might tell you. It's, it's so spicy, I don't know if I will tell you. I might do it later. The idea that I had this week for a follow-up that is now cancelled. I mean, in a way, I'm glad I can't do it because I get to just focus on editing the Venice series. So I'll get part, what is it, 13 on Friday as usual without you know wasting time editing some Vic 3 crap. You honestly do think Vic3 will be ported to console like Stellaris? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Could happen. Has CK3 not been po uh, ported? Any other games been ported? When I did talk about that ported to console joke, it was a, well, it was a bit of a joke, but it's also got a little element of truth, of the general feel of it. I thought the way they lay out the buttons and the general feel of it, I mean, it just looks less like a PC game. It really does. You know. I don't know how to describe it. I might be talking shite there, but it just looks... I don't know. Certainly looked clunky, that's true. Definitely looked cluttered and clunky and everything. That is all stuff I would definitely say about it. CK3 was ported. Yeah, there you go. I mean, CK3 is their latest release and it is 
the, C the UI looks a lot similar. Ricky 3 got big CK3 comparisons from my video. Definitely some element of truth to that. But I mean, as someone, I've played CK3 quite a bit and I don't dislike that game at all. Quite like it. I had some fun. Uh, I played that new DLC that came out, he's old tires, which I wanted he's to keep old doing, tires. but the people I was playing with just didn't show up. I was actually disappointed by that. I didn't buy that DLC though, because it was overpriced. If it wasn't overpriced, I would have bought it. Thanks for the Prime uh, Memesy, thank you very much. By the way, in terms of my normal streaming content, I am looking for a, uh, a campaign, a Vic2 campaign right now. I'm probably going to sub substitute the zombie campaign on Friday, but that's not a new campaign, that'll just be joining a campaign going on. Oh, but as for as for the game being ported to mobile, no, that's that's a joke. Okay, that'll never happen. That's stupid. Unless they make the only way they can make a mobile game is if they change the game significantly. You know, just a completely different game if they actually want to do mobile. The Discord live stream I felt was lagging a bit and may have made the game look worse than what it was. Uh, yeah, the Discord live stream didn't lag. It didn't make the game like any less frame rate or anything, but it does lower the quality and the resolution, definitely. But I did say that. I made that disclaimer, you know, when I first put the footage up. Just wait for the Ninja Bushido Rage Quit. Yeah. Has it not happened yet? What, are they on session three and it hasn't happened? Will Vic3 MP be hosted on day one release? Probably. Paradox minus one million social credit. I looked at Paradox's share price, hasn't really been affected by this. Looks like a tiny YouTuber spot gun doesn't have that big an effect. Who could have fucking thought it, guys? This is all tiresome. This is all tiresome. Love your videos. Probably the best Victor's content creator out there. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Make. Thank you very much for the two months of Prime and the kind words. It's really weird for me to be doing this kind of stream, actually. I mean, what am I doing? I'm just chatting? And I don't, I've, I don't even have a face cam? What are we doing? What was the resolution of the computer of the person playing the game? That's something I don't know. I can't tell you. I don't have any details on the resolution or anything like that. This is my face cam on the top left, actually. That's my face IRL right now. I haven't heard of that gynophobia. What, what does that name mean, gynophobia? Anyway, no, I never heard of it. Keystone says, Why is the sub audio me saying it's also tiresome? Uh, good question. Will you ever stream some Bannerlord in the future? Ooh, I could do. Yeah, it's very nice, actually. Bannerlord. See, the, the thing about doing this stream right now is, is this view, This is already getting more views than my last Victoria 2 stream. So why, sh why would I not actually just do this? This is the best idea of the stream right now. To be fair, I could have been doing more Victoria 3 discussion streams the whole time. Some men just want to be out of sync. One proud Bavarian and heavy low in common. We both don't pay for Paradox content. Based, thank you, Bowel Shaking Earthquake, for $2.50. And, uh, yeah. You could always make that, uh, one proud Bavarian gets his. And I'm not even gonna. You know that we are not the same. You, you can make that all in your own heads. You know, that we are not the same. You know, the Gustavo. Yeah, you all know. One proud Bavarian gets his content for free from Paradox because they gave it to him. Didn't really get why he sent the crash reports either. I can t I can explain. He sent them because the person I watched, much like myself, really doesn't give a fuck. A lot. There's a lot. Don't underestimate people who just don't give a fuck about anything. Don't un don't underestimate us. Man, Mountain played Persistent Kingdoms content. Yeah, I mean, is there an active server right now on Persistent Kingdoms? 
Bomb world. Hmm. Hey, Pogba, you're not meant to be here. You're, you're muted. You can't talk in my Twitch chat. Get to the Twitch chat for Velas. So for the stream as well, I might, you know, get a couple of guests on just to have a chat. I mean, we can get Zombie, we can get Big Weevil, we can get some great people in here. Hold fast nations at war. Actually, maybe, maybe someday. There's loads of games I should stream. I should stream Halo 3. Because I've been playing that a lot lately. Halo 3 is currently my just go-to off-stream game. Just messing around on big team battle. Uh, splattering people with banshees. Get the rule lawyers on the line. Yeah, I might call Big Weevil in. My, my lawyer. I might have to call him in. Yeah, Master Chief Collection, yes. Do you want to play Verdun? I want to play Isonso when that comes out. The new Verdun game. Set in Italy. And I want to play that with Keystone. I don't know, I just came here to see what we were going to talk about apart f about from Vic3. Oh, there's loads of things to talk about in Vic3. Any chance modders could add units? I don't know. Sink. Are you going to make a guide on how to cook rice? Uh, no, can't say I will. But thank you for the $2. Do $2.50 though, Olazai. Olazaik? Ol Olazaik. Olazaika! Oh. Have you tried out the Game of Thrones mod for Mountain Blade? No. I really don't, I don't really check out, when people ask me if I check out things, I don't really check out a lot of things. I don't really. Top three Halo campaigns? No, I don't know. I, I haven't played that many. I haven't played four. I never finished one. I played Halo 2 campaign one time. The Halo 3 campaign a lot and the Reach campaign a lot. But no, I can't really talk about Halo that much. Have you read my theories that I wrote yesterday? I might have skimmed them. I might have skimmed them. It's going all right, Blue Man. It's going all right. I just realised that how it looks, that what I'm streaming, it looks like I'm implying that I'm actually streaming Vic3 leaked content, but no. Uh, well, you know, I, I went with Some the clickbait video anyway. Spadjum treaties on why New Zealand is superior to all other nations when... I can tell you the amount of Scottish ancestry that New Zealand has, probably one of the reasons it could be the greatest nation. But yeah, thank you so much for the $13, Captain Terrace. Thank you so much. Uh, do you think the leak video will be a net positive? Fuck, I don't know. Um, it was Zombie who leaked it, wasn't it? Yeah, Zombie works for Paradox. <laughs> Swaggun, do you watch TV series or anime of some sort? Um, I don't watch anime. I'm watching a series right now, but I'm not going to say what it is because people will spoil it. <clears throat> for me. So, yeah, I'm not saying. I can't, I'm not even going to discuss it. Um, what was I going to say before that? Oh, yeah, how this could affect my channel. Um, I have not really sat, I really haven't sat down and thought and planned how this will affect my channel. I haven't done that. I'm just doing what I think is uh, nice on a fucking day to day basis. And, you know, focusing on what I actually do, which is the Victoria 2 content.
I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I don't do ridiculous shit. I'm not going to do something that's going to get me instantly banned. I mean, but with this, and I, I'm not, you know, I know for a fact I haven't signed anything with Paradox, so I'm not going to break an agreement. There's not going to be actual legal ramifications. They're just going to, at worst, take down the video, which is what they did, and that's fine. Um, uh, thank you for the kind words, uh, as, you know, as, as Mill, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, I don't know if it was smart to do that could hurt future paradox relationship. Well, um, I really don't care that much about a paradox relationship. If I did, I wouldn't have done this. Uh, take Tommy Still K. Look at Tommy K, for example. Times. Okay, everyone, think about Tommy K. Thank you, Swackle, for uh, eight months of the Prime. He never leaked the content of any game. He never broke any agreements to get paradox to hate him. They just hate him. Because he is who he is, and he's a bit edgy, or was a bit edgy, and they haven't touched him with a fucking barge pole. So if, he, if they're not going to touch Tommy K, what are they going to do with me? Because uh, I'm a lot smaller. As soon they they are well aware that I'm, you know, I was the or I'm the biggest Victoria Two creator at, at the moment, and they're making Victoria Three. And they didn't come to me; they went to one Pride Bavarian. So they're definitely not going to touch me. I don't care. I'm having. I'm very happy with the YouTube and Twitch stuff I do. I'm happy with the amount of money I make, as it is. Um, I'm happy with it. So I don't need to. I don't feel like I really need to go and shill Paradox to make more money or something. I don't care coping and seething. <clears throat> I wouldn't have done this if I did care. It might affect things with other companies as well, because I'm that guy who leaked stuff. What do you mean they went to One Proud Bavarian? They went to One Proud Bavarian to make him their main, uh, you know, their main Victoria 3 marketing team leader, in a way. Saw the video before copyright maneuver, uh, removal. About 35,000 people did, so it's not that, you're not that much of a minority. Way more people watch that than have watched any of my Victoria 2 videos lately, before it got taken down. It's not Paradox employees per se, but... Oh, t oh, look at you, you use that word, not me. Uh, PR team. Maybe. Uh, I don't know the inner workings of Paradox or any game company. I don't know what they do. Paradox either owns you or hates you. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. This is why I don't care. I don't want to play the game. I don't want to try and toe the line. I don't want to try and go in and try and build up amazing relations with Paradox people who hate me. Uh, I don't care. Some men just want to be out of sync. Hello guy, he found because of the glorious video of the leak. Vic 2 Warfare is the greatest that was invented by Paradox. And every Lil Redditor who still defends the new system can kiss me and hug me warmly. Thank you, Paul Allen, for the five dollars. Everybody betrayed me. Thank I you. This world. Thank you, Bren, for gifting a sub. Appreciate it, guys. It would be kind of weird of them to come to you with Vic3 advertising since you rightfully have been very pessimistic about the game. I became pessimistic about the game after, uh, basically, the timeline. They I, they went to One Proud Bavarian before they announced the game, probably, where, uh, with our conspiracy theories. And uh, if they wanted to come to me, they could have done it before, and then used me to market the game. Did cease and desist hit you hard? No, I haven't had a cease and desist. I never signed an NDA, I, never, I haven't signed anything with Paradox, I'm just a person who recorded the footage and uploaded it. I have a greater question, where's Asquith? He's off taking a break, whatever. I don't know. 
But there is a there is an extent to which I was pessimistic before they announced it. Whenever anyone you know anyone who's played in the Victoria Two multiplayer community before they announced Victoria Three will know that everyone's like pessimistic given their the track record track record of stuff that they've released uh, before Victoria Three. People were doomer about it. They know that things were going to be simplified down. Was it a claim or a strike? A strike. Just a strike immediately. Not a claim. They didn't go, this copyright, this video has copyrighted material, how would you like to proceed, take the video down, edit it out, blah blah blah. They just destroyed the video immediately. Well, about 24 hours after I uploaded it. About, no not 24, about 19, 20 hours after I uploaded it. Uh, so 35,000 people saw the video before it got taken down. How does a perfect Victoria 3 look like in the eyes of Supreme Leader Spudgun? I've never looked into that question much. I've never, I'm not a game developer, I don't know. And I also don't know, I know the Paradox's position, trying to appeal to more people, I don't know. I don't have to provide a model for what Victoria 3 should be. Are you sure it's not just the Paradox legal team? I really don't know. The The copyright strike came from their lawyer or their, their legal counsel, Emma something. It's, it's on the video. If you go and click on the video, it says this was taken down to a, due to a strike from this person and you look her up, she's a legal counsel, legal counsel to Paradox. So that's all very nice. But how am I supposed to know if it was this lawyer acting alone, this lawyer acting on orders from Paradox, the whole Paradox marketing team, how am I supposed to know? I don't really, I don't know. Just an updated v Vic 2 that doesn't crash and desync is good enough. Well, yeah, they were never going to do that though. Have you talked to other Grand Strategy Game YouTubers, YouTubers about the leak situation? Uh, no. Should I? Uh, Dino Stan, big shout out to Dino Stan. He put out a tweet in support of me. Uh, I really, there's a lot of Paradox YouTubers I do really like, um, who, but I just don't really talk to them that much. And I should talk to them more, to be honest. And we should do collabs and everything, but I just never get around to it. Basically, the the amazing Paradox uh, YouTubers who I, I like are, and the people roughly. They used to be similar subscriber counts to me, but they've all ex succeeded more because they don't they don't do Victoria too. We've got Ludia, Astoria, Mountain General, Dino Stan, possibly others. You know, Lord Lambert. Uh, you know, the people I'm I've talked to. Don't think didn't think it was that big a deal to get YouTubers to support you behind this. No, I didn't. I'm not asking for anyone's support. I don't need it. I'm just doing what I'm off doing my own stupid thing. It was obvious that video was going to get taken down, right? In a way, yeah. I kind of ex I expected it. Yeah. Is Mountain General as based as he seems? I don't know what you mean by that, but he is based. Yes. So are all the names I just gave you. Ludi, yep, Ludi's great. Ludi made a video on uh, criticizing the Victoria 3 war system as well, so good on him for criticizing it. He's more, he, I, I, he probably has more deals with Paradox. I don't have any. These guys all do. That's very nice. And there, you know, he still criticized it. We should have a multiplayer game with all these people. Should I skip work today? No. It was good, but it was on the second channel, so kind of cringe. Well, some people have different channels for different purposes and different types of video. He puts his EU4 content on the main channel, right? And he puts more discussion -y videos, other games on the other channel. So that's what he did, right? Nothing wrong with that. Is there a chance that modders would make a decent combat system somehow? Well, that's what Ludi exactly addressed in his video, and he's right. If they don't have any units, you can't mod units in. Zero percent. You, it just doesn't work like that. Uh, 
Ever thought of doing a cross collab with Bo Cohen and his victus? No. No. No, no, no. You should do Diplo with other GSG YouTubers so that if PDX attacks you, you won't be alone. Well, I guess, but I think I already... Those guys, some of those names, all those names that I mentioned, I mean, if something terrible happened, I think those guys would already support me and I would support them if something terrible happened to them without a fucking question. I supported that, you know, ODD Stan or something, he made Paradox meme videos, they took his channel down for hate speech, just for his memes, little slightly edgy memes. I think they're giving it back or something, I don't know. I think he's getting his channel back, he said, I don't know. I'll always support other content creators when companies YouTube everything, unless, they, unless there's some case where they actually deserve it, but yeah. My default position is to support this is the tiresome. This is creator tiresome. over the company until proven that they deserved it. Jim Curry, thank you so much for the seven months. The stream, oh my god, I just love rambling on endlessly about nothing. With uh, 150 viewers, which is more than any Victoria 2 stream I've done lately. I'll watch your videos again if you stop saying soy wojack like a normie pleb, it's soy jack. Soy jack is short for soy wojack. Didn't Ludi get story a cheat? I don't know what you mean. I don't know. Probably not. This is all tiresome. This is all tiresome. For once, it's not a gifted sub. Thank you, Pogba, for the six months. Appreciate it. He's currently muted on my Discord, by the way. Everyone pray for him. Or everyone give a salute for Pogba, who's muted on my Discord. Maybe one day he'll get out. How long is your sentence, anyway? Are you a current thing supporter? No. I couldn't care less about the current thing. Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. Thank you, Bowel, for gifting a sub to Keystone. If you are a sub, of course, you can use the actual saluting emoji that I got. The one that I put right at the start of the video this today tiresome. as well. This is all tiresome. When is Imperator Rome 2 coming out? When is Imperator Rome 2 coming out? Thank you for the 13 months Nerf Cougar. Imperator. What a story of that game. Baraki is currently streaming my stream in my Discord chat, other Discord voice chat. He's done that before. He did that very early on, actually. Back in the day. Shout out to them right now. They're listening. They're listening to me in my, my own voice channel while I'm in this channel alone talking to myself. But yeah, Ludia Historia is great and all, but uh, I don't really like EU4 that much, so I don't watch it, but yeah. Damn, these are new. I've had them for months, but they are, they are the newest emotes I have, but I have had them for ages. Did you know that Baraki is currently engaged in a copyright violation which is arguably even worse than my one of the Victor Victoria 3 leak footage? By streaming my stream in the Discord channel. I'm going to copyright strike him. Exclamation mark mute. Streaming a stream. Well, that's essentially what I was doing with the Vicky 3 uh, footage. What else are we talking about? There's loads of stuff about the Victoria 3 and the leaks and everything, topics and analyze, analyze, analyzing we can do, different angles we can go at it from. Lots of comments. Sadly, all the comments that I got on that video are gone. 
there was like fucking 350 comments. When I say I read all the comments, that video really pushed it to the limit. Uh, it's re I, I get, you know, bigger YouTubers can't read all the comments and I understand why. Just a ridiculous amount of them. And I also have a life to get on with. Do you roughly know how this got leaked? No, I don't know. And if I did know, I wouldn't even say it. Who leaked the game? I don't know. Do you think Paradox will re-add Unit Micro in the Vic 3 DLC? No. Are, are even more of them fucking doing it now? Those bastards. Uh, was Big Weevil new in the Muscovy series? Yeah. When he subbed a country in the Muscovy series, he was pretty new. Yeah, I think. Have you played Vic 1? I haven't read Slime Jime in the comments yesterday. What? Oh, someone was argu this person was arguing how Paradox was closer to that game than Vic 2, since he could manually promote pops there. In that sense, it probably maybe is closer to Vic 1, yeah, but in other senses, it's not. Spud, where does your avatar come from? That is a state secret. If you leak that, I'll copyright strike you. Now, I can't move to the other channel, guys, because if I do, I'm going to disappear from the top left of my stream, okay? Look, this will happen. I'm gone. I move to the waiting room. Who's going to... Let's see who joins me in the waiting room. I'm going to channel people can move in right now. Oh, I saw that one. Uh, Soy Jack Zero D. Uh, who's here? Uh, oh my everyone. god, they all moved. Bro, there was a literal Caesar 3 stream up there. Why didn't you join? A what? Hello? Hey. <laughs> I don't know what that you're, you're is. Celebrity. There's new people here in this channel. They could spam the N word and get me blocked. I don't trust that. I'm moving yeah, away. Welcome, guys. What we do that? Hi, Keystone. But it doesn't look like a phone Keystone. game, though. Keystone. Call me, call me Stai. Um, ben. There's one. That's it's a giant. Everyone's so giant. Jesus. It's all so tiresome. <laughs> Hey Keystone, how, how are you doing today? Are you having a great time? This channel is my team of well-paid lawyers. Yes, so true. Yes. It leaves us in Reddit, Carla, yeah. Anyway, anyway, I'm back. Uh, thank you, Steady Snap It, for the 13 months. Appreciate it. When, when is Reno opening his casino? Alright, you no. secret uh, cabal of people. Keystone and Zombie, what's up? Damn. I didn't think I'd get wrecked on that fast. I mean... So what's up? We've got to have the koala as soon as we see him. I couldn't Damn. get Weevil. I couldn't get my own fucking lawyer <laughs> to show up. Damn. Well, good thing I'm here to replace him, I guess. Well, what do you think right. of the whole leak situation, zombie? Hmm. Well, well, what am I thinking? It's a leak. I mean, what else can I say about it? It's a leak. We all experience them sometimes, especially yes. when you're a lot younger. <laughs> and when you get much older, actually. What got all that so to true. look to? Yeah. But it's a leak, and uh, some people have it. And uh, I actually know some of the people who have it. Oh. As well. But uh, actually, you know, well, I'm not going to say who it is, of course, but. Damn. You know, I'm say yes. But I do have quite the experience with this leak, to say the least. But I don't have quite the experience. He's old you watched a lot of the footage tired, as well? So. I only yeah. watched that stuff that I did record. I never fucking got involved or saw any of it any other time. Yeah, no, I've, I've seen quite a bit of it. I saw that, of course. I wasn't seeing VC at the time. What? But, yeah, I was. I mean, don't you remember? I no. mean, 
I'm not going to say who it is, but I mean, no, I remember I was in that VC as well. We were streaming it um, just randomly, but I think that was the VC anyway. I can't remember, to be honest, but it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I have like, I've seen quite a bit of a, of how the league, of a, like gameplay of the league and stuff. I can't remember. I, I don't remember being in that VC. I don't remember the mm. league. I don't remember who it was who was doing it. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember I mean, anything. You weren't the one doing it anyway. I don't remember. I, to be there. I, don't know. I don't even remember Victoria 2. What part of the mm. Venice series is the next part? I don't even know. I don't know. Is it part 55? I can't remember. Venice series. All I know is oh, that... Uh, don't say it. Don't spoil anything. Oh. I mean, I'm not spoiling anything. I just <laughs> remember what part it was. Was it part 15? I can't remember. When part 15? Why was Keystone in here? I guess he did. He not have permission to speak or something. I bet he didn't I have permission to speak. I mean, I assumed you dragged him in. and He just didn't speak. But I assume... Maybe he's just got the epic permission fail. I don't know. Yeah, but but all I can say is that people currently watching the Venice series with Zombie in the channel here, I'll just say people are in for maybe a pleasant surprise in a future episode. <laughs> oh yeah, I actually can't remember that game, so I can't even spoil anything. But I do. I guess I recall some things of it, but yeah, I can't. Remember. Anyway, yeah. So what's going on? I mean, because as I said, I have experience with the leaks, but I don't know how much I can actually say about it. So I'm not going to keep my mouth shut. I guess you I can. I... I th you can say anything about the game. I can Just I? not I anything mean... about people or the leak or how. They right, well, uh, if you yeah. if you have experience with the game, share it with us. Well, I'm not going to hold back then. So uh, I've seen gameplay okay. of it. I've actually played it myself. Whoa. Because... But actually, yep, I did. I'm not oh gonna hold God. back, as I said. I'm like, not gonna... Have you got a good lawyer in Denmark? Nah, I mean, I don't like in Denmark. It's like I, I, I said, I, I haven't distributed, I haven't even downloaded. I just got to play on someone else's setup. Ah. But as I said, like in Denmark, it's not really a big deal as long as you don't distribute anything. So I mean, really that's closer to Sweden. It's closer to where the paradox lawyers can fucking <laughs> okay. chase you down. Fucking Emma. What was her name? I forgot her second name. <laughs> Emma. The, well, but as I said, like, I don't, I haven't actually like gotten it myself, but I have gotten a chance to play it and I've gotten a chance to uh, watch it and all that stuff. And there's quite a bit of interesting stuff in it. Like, oh, wait, I, mean, I forgot. Can you stop? I need to thank a sub. Thank you, Operation Peg, for the 14 months. Carry on. Yeah. So I've played quite a bit of it and and most of it is as you would expect. You got the the markets are pro actually pretty interesting. The markets are interesting, and you also have the um, what like the import and export trade routes, right? That's actually pretty good as well. And um, it's not wait, a bad wait, wait. Sorry, I have to stop you again. How did Keystone yeah. just move into the channel? Is he a... for it? I'm you can't for fucking it. move. You... <laughs> Only I can move people in this channel. How did he move in? Did did move did me moving him in before give him permission to move back? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, maybe a mod Sorry. People are actually interested and actually fucking really want to hear this, so carry on. Yeah. So the so the market or the, the trade route system is actually pretty good. Um it's a lot better than you think. It's what I thought when I before I actually got to see it is that you would have a limited amount of trade routes, right? Like that was like the idea because of Civ Civ five like or whatever. But you can actually have as many routes as you as you as you can supply. So as long as you have the convoys or the trade like the convoys or whatever. For overseas trades, you can actually pretty much have as many okay. trades as you want. That's so. that's really um, good. We don't want that, we don't want some arbitrary limit like a part of the capacities or anything. Yeah, that's good. So that's good. I, I didn't notice any like uh, any limit on. You can pretty much just have as many as your capacity to trade or transport stuff actually allows. So that's that's good. Um, as for the, I guess everything else like the economy is interesting. I, I don't know how much I can even really say about it because a lot of it is like. They might change some of the stuff, right? I'm not going to say like, oh, this is going to be exactly how this is going to be in the final release. But the economy is very different from Vic 2. Like, it, it, like to an extent, you wouldn't actually get to know it from just reading the dev diaries. It's like a lot of it is like, uh, like indirect, you know, like it's not something you would know from just playing the game. But I think a good example of it is, let's say if you take a Vic 2, right? It's basically what I think you're playing. It's like you take Vic 2, you have one un unit of steel, right? One unit of steel is always one unit of steel. It only changes uh, value by being consumed, by being uh, produced, or by being sphere duped, right? That's, there's always one unit of steel and until it disappears from the game. But Vic 3 is a lot more, like, less tangible. Like, let's say you have 10 units of steel, right? 
those 10 units of steel can become 30 units of steel depending on how the calculations happen. Like, they're, they, it's not really keeping track of like the exact amounts of goods. And I can't really explain it without showing the game, which I obviously can't do. So I don't know how much I can actually like elaborate on it, but trust me, it's a uh, well. It's very even if you wanted to, you you couldn't show the game because you yeah. don't have. Well, it. I mean, I, I did some I did some recordings and stuff of like me testing yeah. it on that setup, but like that's but as I said, I can't show that because I don't want to get in trouble. So I'm just explaining stuff. Um, but it, it's very all, different. All the stuff, like, uh, all the stuff you're telling us is stuff we can we can we're just have, we're just talking about theories right now anyway and stuff you can get from the dev diaries. There's uh, nothing leaky. It's fine. <laughs> so true. Um, One of the big questions is, right, since you have a lot more experience of watching other people... <laughs> what, paying for the version, Watching other it? people Whatever. leaking. <laughs> watching <laughs> watching other people leaking all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, what, what the, the thing about the UI and the quality of the game, right? The, the footage yeah. I got was laggy as fuck and it was bad quality, which oh, gave yes. a bad oh. impression. A bit of an unfair bad impression, I have to admit. Yeah, it it is because the quality is actually quite good. Like, I mean, it depends because my PC is actually pretty slow when it max uh, max graphics settings when I tried to run it for my friends. But like, it's actually when I saw it and I played it there, it's actually pretty good. It's depending on your PC setup, right? It actually looks pretty good. It's not like like on this. I guess wherever you got the for the footage from, it's like it's laggy. It's a, it's a Discord stream, right? It looks like shit at leg. It's not like yeah. that at all. It's actually quite a. It's actually pretty. It runs pretty nice for being a dev build. Like surprisingly good, actually. Is it a dev build? What is a dev build? Who even knows? Well, I mean, I actually, okay, I didn't leak it. I don't, I don't even know what it's from. Okay, I just got it from my friends or whatever. So it's like I don't actually know exactly where, like, what I don't. I don't know exactly where it's from. Okay, like I don't know. If we it's just don't know. There's no point. Build. There's no point even speculating or talking about yeah, it. But the knows? point is, it's a build. That looks like it's halfway done. I said you can play it; it's playable. It crashes, but it, it's playable, right? And I'm gonna assume most of it UI-wise is how it's gonna be. And the U and the actual like uh, stability is pretty good. It crashes sometimes, but that's you know that's gonna be fixed. That's not gonna be in the final release. It's just the well, uh, you say that. Uh, well, I'm gonna assume that. Okay, I'm gonna assume based on the previous is that the final release isn't gonna crash this much as it does in this build. Right, it's going to be decent, at least, stability-wise. As for the UI, it does have an option, because a lot of people ask about this, it does have an option to scale the UI. You can scale the UI as you want to. Like You can scale it to, like, like 120%, for example, from 80%. And um, it actually does uh, scale with your resolution, as far as I can tell. Um, I, did, I did some testing on it, and actually, you can actually scale the UI to be bigger. So that's, like, not a, as big of an issue as people think, I suppose. Okay, that's good. Um, one thing, though, I do say is that the UI in general is kind of unintuitive. Um, a good example that some some people mentioned, and I also noticed myself, is that you know the the CK three current situations thing. Right, you click on a thing, and then you get like a bunch of stuff that like it tells you a bunch of stuff in a sub menu, right? Uh, um, maybe it's hard to, but it has that, and it's not. I don't really like it that much because. So you know, how, let me put an example. In Victoria two, you have a, a military tab where it shows you the amount of brigades you have plus the amount of mobilized brigades, correct? You see that immediately just by looking at the game, yeah. right? In Victoria 3, you have to open a sub-menu and then you have to look at that to figure out how many brigades or battalions you have. So oh. it's, it's not as intuitive as like Vic 2, in my opinion, with the UI stuff. That's just what I noticed. I mean, obviously, having not played it myself, I haven't looked through the shit, but just in Victoria 2, you only have to go like one menu deep to get any information. You click a tab, it opens the menu. There's nothing deeper than one yeah. menu layer but it seems like in victoria 3 there's lots of complicated paths you have to go through menus and yeah where everything um, is it's could like, be wrong but it seems like that. in my opinion it's a double-edged sword because some of them are quite nice like they really double down on like the right clicking like pretty much any ui element whether it's pretty much any ui element whether it's a good or a building you can right click and you get like a bunch of options to do stuff quickly and that's really nice because let's say you want to let's say you want to upgrade a, a Let's say you're lacking iron, right? You want to upgrade iron mines or whatever. You can just right click on the good where it has shortage iron and you just click expand all buildings. It's actually really nice and intuitive that way. So it's like a double edged sword because, like, some of the things are really nice, but other things are just kind of annoying, like the sub menus and stuff where you have to, like, go to sub menus and sub menus to find stuff that should be on the UI just by default, like okay. brigade. 
So the UI is a mixed bag, in my opinion. Some things are good, but some things also aren't. Um, well, that's all right then. Not terrible. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not, like I think it's like really close to being a good thing. If they just stop doubling down the bad UI stuff, like the current situations thing, they actually would be decent, I think. But it has some things holding it back, in my opinion, is what I'll say. Um, and that's a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of people speak, you know, the warfare system, right? The one that's been memed to... Yeah, the war, I was going to ask about that, and, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, the warfare system is surprisingly how you would expect. There's not really any big qualms. It's like, basically, if you read the dev diary, it pretty much functions exactly as it's described. Like, you have generals and admirals, you have battalions assigned to them, you put them on the front, and you click attack or defend. And that's pretty much it. There's not really much else to it than that, surprisingly. You just... The game just runs calculations, it figures out which provinces it goes to based on a bunch of facts that you can actually mod which provinces they go to, by the way. I check, check the files oh, and stuff. Oh, wait. So yeah. does that open the door for modders to mod in um, a good mill system? The, maybe. Maybe. Like, it, it, it's only AI. So, like, you can mod what the AI weights. Like, let's say you have, if you have a front, right? The AI does calculations which provinces it's going to take, right? But you can modify these calculations so that you can say, okay, the AI should only go towards the provinces of this variable or this type. A example. variable that you can get from, say, clicking on the province? Uh, maybe. Maybe you can sign a variable and then you can, like, put it... That I can't speak of because I haven't gone that deep into this it This is way uh, deeper than any other Victoria 3 content you'll get on any other fucking channel. We are already right in the fucking This is... Hi, Keystone. This is too much for me. This is too much for yeah, me. Yeah, like, maybe you can assign a variable and you can move to that. I can't say because I didn't go deep enough. Maybe, maybe not. I would, I would doubt it, though, because that would require... Well, the thing is, this, you might be able to do that, but the system itself is not made around this fact. So if you modded this in, the system will be really awkward and counterintuitive to do because we, because there's some things that are hard-coded, like the fronts. So the fronts are automatically created, you know, with the enemy. So you can't, like, make separate fronts. It will, all be, it will always be the same front if you find, like, Russia versus uh, Germany. It will also be the same front, like, with the Polish and border, whatever. You can't, like, split a front. So it would be kind of unintuitive if you modded that in anyway. So I'm not sure if it's really worth doing, but... Yeah. Maybe, like, we'll see. I didn't really go deep enough into that to really, like, the modding part of it. But the real estate system is pretty much what you'd expect. I don't think I don't think it's a good system. I'm sure you don't either. But that's not like some. No, actually, surprise. zombie. I've changed my mind. I think it's a good system now. Um, I saw some Reddit posts, uh, some arguments on Reddit that they really convinced me. I'm I'm now completely in favor of Victoria Three. I'm no, I'm joking. <laughs> Uh, uh, um, I think my biggest criticism of the game in this state, I mean, it is, it is an early build. I'm going to be, you know, nice to it. Like, obviously, they haven't, you know, fixed everything yet. So I'm not going to be too harsh on it, of course, because it's an early build. But my biggest criticism, like, from a fundamental point, is that since they took out the military, basically, it's mostly like a non-thing. You you don't really interact with it much. You just let it run, run is kind of the intention, I think. So you let it run. But the thing is with the economy is that I feel like the economy is a lot more abstracted than the Victoria 2 economy is. The With the example I used before, with the one unit of steel is always one unit of steel, it doesn't really... it's not really how it works here. Like, um, to give an example, and this is the example that I had, is let's say you have a steel mill, right? It requires 10 iron and 10 steel, or 10 iron and 10 coal to yeah. produce 10 steel, okay. right? Let's say you have uh, 5 cell ores of iron, so you can get 5 iron in that one, and you need 10 right then what will happen is the game will actually still buy 10 iron but just buy it from nowhere and then you'll just get a throughput penalty if you go below 25 percent what from like the, the world the world market import it yeah it's hard to explain because you have to know how like the actual victoria 3 game works and i can't explain that easily without showing it which i can't do so basically the gist of it is um the game doesn't care how many goods you get unless you get less than 25 percent of the required goods if you get less than 25 percent of the required goods then it will reduce the, uh, the throughput by one percent each day to a maximum of 50 percent uh, if that makes sense like it's it's really weird and if you're used to victoria 2 economy it makes no sense and that's kind of why i wanted to mention it because it's something that's really put me off when i tested it on my uh, friend's setup but like really yeah i agree i agree like and like it, it's just weird like and I know it's probably too late for retooling, but if any Victoria 3 devs are here, please make this more intuitive. I don't think this is going to go well with most people when, they, when the game comes out. I, I, hope yeah. the, I hope the actual devs of the game, the people doing 
the groundwork are actually more, you know, they're more it, like they want to listen to us and actually care about what we're saying. Maybe it's just the marketing team and the higher ups that are shite. I don't know. No. But I mean, if there is some situation like that, then, you know, listen. Yeah, my theory is that they did it for stability to make the game run smoother because it is easier. Like if you if you take Victoria too, it's a lot harder to calculate each individual good than it is to just compare like Bill orders twenty five versus buy orders one hundred. It's a simple variable comparison. It's a lot simpler than you know putting each good in its own like variable and whatever you want to do. So I can see why they did it, but I still think they went way too far because at this point the abstraction just becomes too big. And then you have weird situations like you're buying goods that don't exist and the money just gets paid to no one. No one. It's so it's weird. Like that's uh, let's move on to the next uh, oh sorry, uh got a phone call. Then Two seconds. Perox is coming for you, bro. It's the lawyers man coming for me, bro. Emma? Oh it's Emma, right, okay. Uh, <laughs> hi, uh... Oh, all right, I'm back. Uh so okay. Uh, Victoria 3's war system, I'm very much in favour of it. As I said already, my mind was changed. I support the system and uh, yeah, very much in favour of the system of military in Victoria 3. Yeah, um, totally. I mean, I love it. I think it's the best thing ever. No. <laughs> uh, honestly, though, I could see it happen. It could have potentially if they actually like fleshed it out. I, I, but of course, you have, when you only have two options, you can't decide the front, you can't decide anything. I guess. It's, it really feels like they made it to just not be interacted with, if that makes sense. Like, just made it yeah. to just be there. They probably, be they probably will flesh it out. I've already seen, even in the dev diary of the war stuff, they already hinted at future stuff they could add, like yeah. orders you can give. They'll probably do more DLC on it. People ask me, will they make a DLC that actually adds units in the game? No, they won't do that. They'll make DLC. Yeah, they'll make yeah. DLC that fleshes out and adds stuff to the current system they have. In yeah, the game. definitely. I mean, it would have to be it would have to be really, really bad for a complete retooling to be justified. And I don't think having played it, I don't like it at all. But I don't think it's bad enough to where like the general population would be like, we have to change this now, kind of thing. Because I don't think the I don't think the player base this game really cares that much about war, like the people that are going to buy this game. So oh yeah, you probably won't need to. But... Most of the people seem to support it, and I, I've just been. Yeah hammering on about how the Victoria 2 sweaty multiplayer don't like it and it'll turn us off the game doesn't mean the game will fail uh, so that is true yeah I I think it'll, I think it'll be successful you know like it's it's a lot more like newer paradox games you know duh because it is a new paradox game so you know you kind of have to go in with with that in mind instead of like with Victoria 2 in mind because Victoria 2 is like a completely different ball game like uh like the move is pretty big from these two games in like the terms of this mechanical underlying stuff it's kind of like the move from Victoria 1 to Victoria 2, except even bigger, in my Will opinion. Will you still play Victoria 2 after Vic 3 comes out, and even if it does well? I think so, yes. Because um, I feel like Victoria 3 has potential, but it's just not the, it's just not the same type of game. I, do, I, do, I don't even think they fit in the same franchise to a certain extent. I feel like it's just a completely different experience than Victoria yeah. 2 is. That's really what I can say about like having, you know, having tried, having watched the gameplay of it and stuff. Yeah. It's a completely different ball game. When I was uh, when I was having a shower, which I recommend everyone does, um, I, I had this thought. Right, this game is so radically different from Victoria Two. They should have they should have come up with a different name for it. Not outside the Victoria franchise. They could have they should have called it Victoria something. Not mm. Victoria. Th I mean, they're obviously not. It's a stupid idea. Just a random shower thought. But imagine if they called it, you know, Victoria, and then a nice word. Yeah. Like Honestly, Imperator Rome instead of. Yeah. You know, I feel like it's. I feel like that probably would have made sense because I feel like they went, probably went with a Victoria Three name because it's like you know it's an established franchise. But if they made, let's say, if Victoria Two didn't exist, if Victoria hey, One wait, wait, exist, someone just suggested Victoria Revolutions. That's fucking. That's Victoria One. It is Victoria One. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So Can't use that one. <laughs> I've already used that. Because <laughs> like the thing is like Victoria. If if we say Victoria One and Two didn't exist and this was like the first Victorian era game, right? I think they probably would have made the same type of game anyway. It's just the difference is this franchise is already established, so it just makes more sense to like call it Victoria Three, right? Than like saying Bismarck One or whatever else. They, what, they would what come. Would up they? With. What could they? I haven't seen any actual suggestions in the chat. Victoria struggling. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, like I, I don't, I don't, I don't, because I feel like a lot of people, you know, they think that you know we should talk the game too much, and I can see where that comes from, but. I want this game to be good, so I just hope that the, you know, the 
stuff I say can be used to turn it um, around. Victoria you know? Blood and Iron. You can't Blood and Iron. You can't use that. That was on the back of Victoria 2's box, and it was a that hint at the yeah, war. And how war is a big part of Victoria 2 always has been. It was on the back of the actual box. It said conquer mm -hmm. through blood, conquer through iron, some shit iron. like that. Rule through mm -hmm. iron. Yeah. It says it on the box of the game. You know, um, they can't gaslight us into thinking it was never a war game. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking says I, it. I always like to say, yeah, like, Victoria was always like 33% of war, 33% economy, and 33% politics. Yeah, sure, or, yeah, yeah. And I feel like Victoria 3 is just like 1% war. And 49% politics and 49% economy, essentially. Uh, having having one percent war actually makes it a lot easier to divide the other three things into 33%. Because you add 33, 33, 33, and then one, you get a hundred. It's a very nice equation. It's it's round, it works. It means you yeah. can use three thirds. You know? Yeah. I don't blame them. I don't blame them for using that maths. What yeah. are we even talking about? <laughs> But uh, what, else, what else, I guess, there to talk about? Oh, yeah, so um, I guess another thing with the UI is that um, in your original video, that because the, the footage that was shared didn't actually show this at all. So I guess you should just elaborate. But the, you know the buttons that look like the mobile game thing? Like the one of the buttons or whatever that you uh, made fun of, whatever, right? Yeah, the lenses. Like, yeah, the lenses. They're actually not that bad, even though they look that... Cause I'm hey, I never, I never said the lenses themselves would be bad. I only said the buttons look like fucking console or mobile game buttons. That is only true. Yeah. This out of that. I didn't say they're the actually features really would be nice. bad. Um, because they actually have really some really good macro builder tools. Because they they basically allow you to basically build stuff from the map. Like you know how in Victoria too, you have to like go to the province and you have to click build factory and you have to click the thing. Here you can just click the thing and just click on the state you want to build it in and just builds. It's a lot easier to use. Yep. It's a nice UI touch, I think. Um, is it, you can do it with the closest thing. thing you have in Vic 2 is the infrastructure map mode, right? You know yeah, yeah, I mean? you don't really get that type of a, of macro builder tools, which is a nice touch. You can build everything. You can actually build like the Suez Canal from the map too and everything. Like, you got a ton of shit you can build from the, the map oh. that you don't need to... Uh, I just wanted to, to say some. I just wanted to say some. Okay, I just, yeah, I just, go ahead. It's, it's out of context though. Yeah, fuck it, go ahead. I just ate a gorgeous pasta with ragu sauce. Very oh, nice. It was very good. So real. Can you say, this is so tiresome? In Italian? No, in English. This is all tiresome. Okay, hopefully I'll be hearing that a lot more as well, because it's my sub fucking alert. Mm -hmm. Say it in Italian. Um... È tutto così stancante. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, and also, um, another thing, I don't think they've actually mentioned this yet, um, at all. I'm not sure they do, but there's actually a pollution system in the game. Um, oh, glo <laughs> what, global yeah. warming? Climate uh, change? No, no, it's not, not that actually, that would probably <laughs> be a bit too early for that. But, uh, but basically, just they produce pollution, and that, those, that pollution then gives malice and it can spread to nearby states. It's not really that important, I just thought I'd mention it, because I don't think ever, any dev there has actually mentioned this yet. There is pollution? Yeah. yeah. Pollution. Because I just noticed in the well, files... I mean, that's, that really... makes sense. I mean... It does, yeah. Um, the, are much. there the other air... diseases too? What's wrong? The air in a are Victorian they... industrial city was fucking... Yeah. smog. What about yeah. diseases? Um, Dis decisions? Illness. Illness. Oh. Disease. So, I mean, you have a stat, you have different stats. You have a stat that's like, um, I think it's, it's called like work mortality. I'm not entirely sure because it was called something similar to that. But it's this was also revealed in the Dev Diary. It's basically different reforms and different like buildings provide different levels of that. So you basically like different jobs provide different lethality rates, which is also nice. But I, they do, I do believe they showed that at the previous Dev Diary though, with the mortality rates and stuff that you could affect depending on the you know, the building and job, whatever the pops are working in. Um, and yeah, um, what else did I actually... What about the politics? The politics, the politics is uh, actually pretty good, I'm gonna say. Uh, even in the early build, it's actually surprisingly fleshed out. Like, you got political parties, you got the oh. interest groups. Um, yeah, we did get confirmed political parties at some point. Because yeah, they yeah. originally didn't want to have them, and then there was backlash, mm -hmm. and they did add it. Yep. they did that with the with war but you know you know it yeah, is what it, it is 
it works pretty well. Like basically, I mean, it's in a dev directory too, but basically how it works is you have a government and you invite different interest groups into the government. And depending on how much you have, depending on how much the interest group you invite into the government have against each other, you get the government legitimacy. If the government legitimacy is low, you can't pass any laws basically, or it takes forever to do so. So you have to actually like watch out free interest group relations to make sure that like uh, you get interest groups into power that help you pass the laws you want. But at the same time, if you if you if you alienate them too much, uh, which is what I actually did often when I played this, is um, then they actually revolt and they actually re like they it's like really nasty. Like it's not like Victoria 2 Rebels, something completely entirely. It's a lot similar to like like the HFM like tag revolts, where like an entire new nation breaks free from your nation, and you have to like fight it to win. And God, it's that's so cool. rough. Yeah. So a, a good example is like if you when I tried and I played this as like a test game on my friend's PC. I actually, for, I actually tried to abolish serfdom as Russia day one. I invited in the, I think it's Petsev or whatever, which are against it. And like, you just get like a huge amount of like, uh, what's it called, turmoil and, which is like, which basically like militancy in uh, this game. And then you got the revolution. So like, you get like the landowners, landowners interest group and start revolution against you. And they just fucking destroy your ass. So that's actually Jesus. a lot of stuff to worry about. Um, like there's actually, this is something that Victoria 2 never had. It's like, you could always just like, don't care about the upper class, right? You don't have to give a shit about the upper class because like, who cares? There's such a small number, right? But in Victoria 3, it actually makes you care because they can actually fuck you up really badly if you, if you alienate them. <laughs> but actually... do, you, do you have like characters as well as like, kings and uh... yeah. yeah, you really got characters. 3D models. I didn't really pay much attention to them because like they're pretty much just a modifier because like each character has like three traits which affects stuff. I don't really pay much attention to that since it's just... Have you, have you, tried, have you tried playing, like, England in the UK? Like, you tried he he hasn't played it, Kison. Oh, I thought... Fuck. Well, I mean, I did play it on my friend's PC, but I didn't actually have it on my own. So I didn't actually... Oh, okay. So I, I actually did get... I, it wasn't much, but I tried to test as much as I could when I did when I could play it. His friend gave him, like, you know, team viewer here, play the game. Yeah. Absolutely. So one thing I did notice though is interesting as well is you know puppets puppets the way diplomatic place works is kind of weird so puppets actually don't aren't obligated to join diplo plays so you can actually have puppets that don't join your diplo play and you can't really force them to um, and I thought this was a bug initially because it seemed to be a bit weird but the tooltip actually does say that puppets just make them more likely to join a diplo play so puppets aren't actually guaranteed to like join your diplo wow. play aka war but actually. Which is a bit weird. I think if I think Paradox should change that, in my opinion, or at least make it like make it dependent on the loyalty stat at the very least. And if they refuse well, to I, join, I them, guess make it so such an overwhelming positive that they join you. Maybe a tiny bit of uncertainty does add a little bit of having to manage yeah. them. But I just think if if they refuse to join, though, you should get like an option to like restore order on them. You know, like put a loyal government in or whatever to like make sure they actually follow your commands and stuff. Yeah. Because there wasn't really much recourse when I when I tried to get him to follow your orders if they refused to, you know, join you and stuff. Uh, just like the um, old classic command units button. Oh are yeah, we? the classic. Well, classic. you can't command units if there aren't any units. True. I mean, I'm pretty sure I, I didn't test this at all. So, um, but I'm not sure if you actually can command units. You might be able to, maybe. Um, if you get like an if you get a pup in a war, maybe you can command the generals. But I doubt it. I'm not sure. I I can't speak on that. Didn't test it, but I can. Are we going to see a, an alt stats for V3? <laughs> I mean, I will say though, there is actually a lot of stuff you can change. Like the modability is quite high, so we probably could make an MP mod for this. It would require oh. a lot of. It would probably require the most work of any Perox game. Would make I, work I wish MP. Reno was here. Is Reno around? Let me pay him. <laughs> Let me pay him. Uh... I pinged Reno. He probably won't come in. But imagine if we got <laughs> Reno. Oh my god. We got Reno in with the fucking round table? Oh god. With the. Now we have actual information on and stuff. Maybe, maybe Reno will make some meme reverts for the. For the big three. Game. We, all, we all wanted to know his, uh, his take on current events. Now we want to know his take on Victoria 3. The leaks. Yeah. Um, I don't think he would like it. But. <laughs> Probably not. Gotta get his opinion. <laughs> Um, Spudgun, did you did you enjoy Morbius movie? Um, I haven't seen it. Okay. <laughs> did you enjoy it? Um, 
I mean, it, 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 uh, I, I, I can't really say much about that movie. Uh, just oh. confused right now. Okay. What else okay. have we got to talk about? Oh, yeah, the diplomatic plays. What diplomatic plays. And the war of starting. So, I mean, that's that's not really much to talk about there either. It pretty much works exactly as you would use they explain the dev drive. You have a maneuvering phase, and basically you have like these maneuver points, right? And you basically you use them to add the wall goals before the like the the next phase begins, where you can't have wall goals anymore. So the maneuver points essentially like war score. You know, like it's like the maximum amount of wall goals you can add, essentially. But um, maneuver. Let, let me just maneuver points. Well, I, actually, I can't remember what they're called. I just know the, like oh, the right. symbol, because um, that's like a symbol. It's like basically, I just call it maneuver points because that's what they are, essentially. Because using them during the maneuver phase, you use them and you add the war goals before the diplo play escalates. Then once it's escalated, then no more war goals can be added from there. At that point, it's basically you know locked in, and then you have to. When the war starts, no one can join either. So on this, on the war there. goals are already locked in, even within the, dip the diplomatic play. Like, it's not yeah. just that they're not in the war. They're, just, they're only in one phase of the play. Yeah, you can only add a... Actually, let me confirm this, because that's that's. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But Just you give much. your friend a phone. Uh, yeah. And see why. But I'm like I'm like 90% sure that you can only add war goals in the first phase of the play. Then in the next phase of the play, that's when you get... The, the actual escalation where like people join where you, you can you like the last stragglers get to join a side and once the war begins no one can join that yeah because someone in the chat just reminded me of this and I haven't I didn't put it, t talk about this in the video at all which I should have which is one of the biggest things about Victoria 2 multiplayer being the diplo between players and what you yeah. can do and that was also the topic of Victoria 3 developers one of their few replies to our questions about multiplayer the famous real people skills quote but the <laughs> diplomacy and the room for diplomacy because victoria yeah. 2 has so much room for players to have diplomacy because there isn't that much railroaded you know interactions yeah. between the players like a so, diplomatic play thing for example it's all yeah open. yeah yeah everything's open in vicky 2 it's yeah. not open by design it's just because you know the game is kind of yeah, yeah, simplistic in that way but much. and older but that's just the freedom it gives us what is that going to be like from what you've seen so what I like to say is what I like to, to call it is like there's a lot of um, mechanical locks in Victoria 3, which means in Victoria 2, it can pretty much do anything, right? The only mechanical locks you have is you can't join a war. You can't join a war against someone you have a truce against, number one, right? It's a limit you can't do mechanically. So tiresome. And so you also tiresome. can't join a war against someone you are at war with, right? That's like the only real two mechanical locks you have. You can do everything else, right? Like everything, you can, you can separate peace, you can join a war, you can separate peace out of it, you can do everything, right? But in Victoria 3, there's a, quite a few more locks. Like, first of all, you can't add war goals in the middle of the war. You also can't invite people into the war in the middle of the war. You also can't... Well, that's one exception. You can't actually do it if someone does, like, the uh, violent sovereignty, which is basically, like, forcing them into the, the war on their side, essentially. But it's basically... Um, so in multiplayer, we're going to, you know, uh, I'm going to, I want to add a war goal. I'm going to call someone in. Let's pause the game and edit them in. We host, yeah, get the so save, that, edit them in. That, that's pretty much it. You would either need to, if you wanted to call someone in mid war, you need to do that. Or you have to make them, you have to t tell them, okay, start this, this separate diplo play against their alliance. And then they have to join the call to like the call trumps or whatever the equivalent is here. Like for this yeah. diplo play. No, just diplo uh, play. just mm -hmm. wait a second. Uh, I, I missed this 15 minutes ago. Milo, thank you for the seven months. And Night Stalker, thank you for the 18 months. Uh, yeah, carry on, please. Yeah, so um, you since you can't call in anyone after the war, I said you would either need to edit them in in a you know a multiplayer match, or or you would need to actually um, just tell them to start a separate diplo play against the one that are in, that is already in the war. Like, <laughs> My God. Like, and, then, and then you tell the other side to join that side of the diplo play, and then you get like you get uh, like a merge. This is actually making right? me feel pain because I just I re just remember how many edits and everything you have to do in normal Vicky too. And now this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's basically like uh, the best I, way to put it. The best way to put it is like just assume your truce if you're fighting a war already just assume that everyone is truce with you because that's basically what it is you, like they can't join unless unless they do the violent sovereignty thing which you could use that to like force people into the war too in multiplayer maybe just like tell them to violent sovereignty on a one like a utility tag maybe that would allow them to join but aside from those sort of weird workarounds there's not really a whole lot of uh, possibility for like extra stuff here um it's basically because you actually 
from what I could tell, this might be wrong because it might be an old release, but I actually couldn't find any way to mod this out. Like, it seemed like the, the whole thing where you can't join in the middle of a war is like hard locked into the game. Like, this was when you were looking at the files through someone's team viewer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was looking at the like the, the defines file, first of all, through that. I, I, it's like the I main don't. file. With I whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you, Night Stalker. Thank you very much. I hope there is a dismantle certification, um, CB. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it really feels like they're trying to recreate the multiplayer thing, but they're putting a ton of re uh, a ton of restrictions into make the AI uh, follow you. Does that make sense? Like, the AI can't use all these. At least, so the thing they can't use all these dynamic, uh, simplistic options because they will fuck it up, world. right? So they just put a ton of restrictions on the player to make sure they can't just easily storm the AI with all these extra options that the AI doesn't know how to world. use. So they put like a ton of extra restrictions on to make sure you can't like game them, presumably because that's what I thought people did in Week Two. That's kind of my idea for why they did this. They want to like they want to like refine the single player experience, um, to you know force you to like fight e quote unquote equally. Which is obviously that obviously makes complete sense for them to do that. Obviously, yeah. But it just it, it just sucks for multiplayer. Like, it's gonna take a lot of the freedom sucks. away from the multiplayer. I just but, wish uh, there's a middle ground and, somewhere where they both work. Yeah, and, you know, that's, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to say that the multiplayer community is like super important. I do think it is, but I'm not going to argue that here. But just, you know, just know it's not, it's not, it doesn't seem super great for MP because it doesn't allow a whole lot of freedom for the players. Like even if you play multiplayer, right, you still have all the same restrictions that you would against the AI that prevents you from doing, you know, all this stuff you actually want to do. I think like, the multiplayer around. community, you know why they're going against us? We're dangerous. <laughs> we gather and, together in groups of people and play the game. This creates yeah. chances for dissent and to shit talk the game mm -hmm. together and come up with new ideas. But when yeah. the people are atomized well, and alone by themselves, they don't question things. I mean, to be fair, I play I, a lot I'm of taking my schizo, I'm player, taking my schizo so. hat off now. I'm back. Yeah. But I think that, um, like, in general, with the, the war system, like, with the war system in different places, like, we already kind of knew this. So this isn't actually new information. We already knew we couldn't join a war, you know, when the war has already started. This just confirms yeah. it pretty much. Um, we learned that yesterday in my video when I said that. Yep. Yeah. Well, they actually also have it in the dev in the dev response. Yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. Know. Yeah. But, but yeah. But something. So you know, we we know that they obviously that they're not really prioritizing the uh, the dynamic MP you know diplomacy very much. They're prioritizing the single player you know doing it with AI kind of stuff, and you know that's probably good for single player I suppose, but not great for MP. One thing that's quite interesting, though, is is that since they haven't talked much about the economy, there's actually a lot of stuff there that people probably don't know. Like, um, well, they already they have kind of said this already, but there's actually, you know, um, do you know what ba a base price is in Big Two of a good, right? You know what? A base price, base price, yeah. uh, just the, you know the, the basic price well, that it has at the start before it fluctuates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the the price that games the the price that the good starts at at game start, and in Big yeah, Two, it's, it's like the hard, price that, hard coded. Normal yeah, it's, price. Yeah, so you can set that in the files, but what's hardcore about it in Vic 2 is that you can like the price can only ever fluctuate down to a fifth of that from a minimum of a fifth of the base price up to five times the base price. That's like a price uh, range. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we have that in Vic 2 in Vic 3 as well, which is really kind of disappointing because what this means is that if 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 a good is, you know, rare and it deserves to be expensive, then the game can actually like can it actually really do this? And it puts a price range where it's a lot cheaper, or a lot more expensive than it actually should be because the price range just isn't big enough to deal with it. And you actually can mod the price range as a variable in defines for this, but it's weirdly restrictive. Like it only allows you to do it from between between zero and 100% extra price range. So I, I'm not sure, like this might be an old build. Maybe it's an old, I hope it's an old build and they, they change this, but right now it seems like the price range is weirdly rigid in its modability and it's just not great. Like the price price range is just awful for an economy focused game, in my opinion. Like price should be free flowing, you know? Like price. Uh, yeah. I mean so. maybe that opens things up to some abuses and really gaming the market in some ways. Yeah. But I mean it it's hard to even say that because as I said, goods aren't actually tangible, so it's kind of hard to even I mean you would need to get lucky to game it, I guess, because like goods aren't actually tangible goods. You have to well, it's complicated, but trust me, you know, when the game releases, if they haven't changed this, you'll find out really quickly. On the floor. What about, what about like government policies, like protectionism and shit like Or like that? laws? Yeah. Some, so, like I mean, there are laws. They had a diff there about this and there isn't too much interesting about it. So you have the laws, like you can have, like, say you can have a law that's called education system, right? You can, you know, select 
you know, public schools, religious schools, yada, yada, yada. And if it's a public school or something similar, then you can go into institutions and then you can select the school system. Whereas if you have private schools or no schools, then you wouldn't actually have access to this or it would have very small effects for you. So you have like, it's basically like um, social reforms and political reforms in League 2, if you want to like visualize it. You have yep. social reforms, institutions, and the laws, which is the political reforms. And, um, you know, they're, they're actually pretty good as well. Um, I looked into it a bit and it it is what you'd expect. You know, you got like serfdom, you got slavery, you got rights of women, welfare, migration. You got you got you got a lot more than the Victoria too with the reforms. So I would say that's actually quite a oh, bit of a step up. So it's um, like that's like DOD. Uh, it's actually yeah, it's HBM. more than that. Those reforms yeah. aren't DOD. Yeah, they're H H F P M, H P F M, H F M, H P M, whatever that thing is. But they have way more than that. They have like how many do they have? Um, they have like about must be have like 25 different uh, laws you can choose like uh, different sections of laws like uh, or types of laws which is quite a bit and they have uh, an equal like a lot of a lot of institutions to rival that with like the police force and public schools and you know all that stuff so i would say that's actually a pretty big step up from big two i like that um, it's a lot more to choose from and, and also embeds nicely the with the politics system like you have to actually work towards uh you have to actually work towards getting something enacted um, because you might get a lot of uh, you might get a if it's like something really bad like if you're trying to get rid of serfdom as russia early you might get a revolution boiling against you at best you might yeah, get some angry that's people a pretty so good on, thing right? yeah that's not good. to be able to get rid of serfdom in 1836 as russia you know that would be ridiculous yes yeah. i mean you can probably game it i didn't i didn't try to meta game that much the limited time i had it but you could i'm guessing you could probably meta game it if you wanted to but at least on a surface level it looks good yeah, Riley was asking a question, but first, uh, Cap Lander, thank you very much for the three dollars. And Riley asked if there are any scripted events that you noticed while uh, um, watching the game on Team Viewer. Well, no, I mean I noticed some. Like uh, actually, the unification of German has its own thing. A unification text in general has its own thing. Like uh, basically, you um, it's a it's like a you know like the journals, right? So it seems like most of the formal nations are actually journals instead of decisions. So, like, let's say you Prussia, right, and you research nationalism, then you get asked the journal entry of NGF, for example, and then to form NGF, oh, you need to own a bunch of uh, German states. It's like you know, Rhineland, Hanover, all the the stuff, like in the two, for example, mod? right? What about um, Thrones Revenge? Once you have, so normally because there's no spheres and you have to own them directly, you know, there's a system where once you research na nationalism, if you have a formable tag like uh, Prussia on Germany. Then yeah. the, all the miners, all the miners gets an event to be annexed to you. It's like it's like doctrine of laps, but for Germany, like actually, um, they just get slowly annexed to you, and they get to choose if they get annexed and all that stuff. So, depending on the, I didn't, know, I don't know this, but presumably depending on the relations and all that stuff. But I didn't uh, check that. What about what about cores? So cores, uh, they don't have cores, like as you would think. You have this thing called homelands. Which is like basically coarse, but not coarse. Like homelands just just describes if you, as far as I know from from having checked this, if you get what like what your infamy penalty is for taking it. So like it's a core, you know, like it's cheaper to take a core or homelands than it's to not take one. Um, and also it also affects the, uh, I think it affects the turmoil too of the state, but I can't say that for 100% because I didn't check this. But I'm assuming it also affects the, uh, like the culture core type thing, Vic two, Vic two, where you get extra militancy. Can stuff, you, for I example, feel. like turn up, like a if you conquer, let's say Belgium as France, can you turn it into some sort of quote unquote core, or is it said homeland? Um, um, that I can't actually speak much on because I didn't check if you could actually quote unquote core it or making it your homelands. I know that the way cultures work is very different from it too. Like you have the primary cultures, but you also have heritage traits. And languages and stuff so i'm pretty sure and i'm not 100 on this <gasps> languages <laughs> unfortunately it, it's going to be really tough to not be able to play the game as most of the countries in the world because they're not in english but i like true. that they've added languages <laughs> <laughs> but but like if you let's say you conquer belgium right their language flemish is closer to like french than like algeria whoa, 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 whoa. well no, not flemish. Like, well, well, well you're technically I, I, right I, I, flemish is closer to french than 
Arabic. Oh yeah, yeah okay, okay. Indo European. I'm but... not good at geography. I'm not good at language. I'm just saying if it's close to your language and heritage traits, like they they aren't discriminated against as much, and if they're not as discriminated against, it gets less turmoil, so less militancy, and you get less penalties for like factory through okay. or building through or whatever. So like if they're close to you linguistically and uh, heritage. Lee or whatever you get less well, penalties for conquest. it's over the uk is conquesting the usa day one it's over yeah. <laughs> it's, it's over like, usa I'm, bros I'm, you got too cocky that, that, that was actually the first thing i tried and i couldn't do it because <laughs> canada, because can, the canada puppet didn't want to join the diplo oh, it's so it starts as a puppet then does it yeah it starts as a yeah. puppet. i yeah. think we already there's, like, there's like five different canada puppets like new brunswick Lower Canada, I think, or like oh. stuff like that. So we got like a bunch of different. It's like HFM, I think. It's like the closest I can yeah, say it. Like a bunch of different. Um, uh, I just want to say, Sneedler, thank you for the three dollars. You, you question as to answer question about uh, Empire at War. I'll answer that later if you stick around. Uh, carry on. Yeah. Okay. Um. And yeah, so you have all that, and because in this build, it seems like naval invasions are broken in this build. Um. So I couldn't actually try to naval invade and you know see if I could. What would happen if I actually conquered the the you know, the, the state thing? And what the, did I couldn't you, see what the uh, was because I couldn't do that. Yeah. But did you do any wars? Yes. So I did do some wars, and so what? I, the one war I did do was France. I played France, and I took the Rhineland. I remember in a diplo play, oh. and, <laughs> Left and it back. seems like. Um, I will say one thing: though, the devs have hit the nail on the head with the the cost of war because war is expensive, like really expensive. If you try to mobilize all your troops, you got, you can easily lose like hundred plus k like on your budget, like every tick. It's really nasty. So, well, they've hit the nail on the head with the cost of war. They've they've done what they said they would do. They certainly yeah. have, but fucking hell, it's going to be a struggle. Yeah. So that's actually a reason to not mobilize because, like, remember, you can mobilize different states individually, right? So there actually is a reason to not mobilize everything because if you mobilize everything, you actually it costs an insane amount of money to do that. So wait, can you can you mobilize partially? What sorry? Can you mobilize like a Well, partially? even I can answer that. You have your generals who are located in one state and you have to mobilize what your generals have. So that gets kind of mobilized okay. individual okay. states. So yes, yeah. yeah, so, so no, how how I can explain how it works. So I, I tested it. So how it works, you have these state regions, which are big states like South France, North France, like big big, you know, region states, right? So you have those and then you have a, you can have generals in each, you know, region or each big state region or whatever so you can have like one general in north france one in south france and so when you mobilize the generals they'll get all the troops in the barracks from those states into their you know fold and then you can like you can also hire other generals like split the units between them in each uh in each uh, state theater but the important thing is if you mobilize your um your you know you mobilize your use of conscription centers to mobilize the population you do like only in one state then they will only go to the general that is in that state region. So, like, if you mobilize the one in, like, let's say, uh, Picardy, right, northern France, right, then those mobs from that from that state will then only go to the um, the general in North France. They will not ever. They won't ever go to the South France HQ uh, general or whatever. So, okay, it's important to keep in mind because it it means like in Victoria too, you can just mobilize everything. You just throw it under like one. Like you can just you can freely move it around, right? You can freely move all the stacks around, no matter where they came from. But this is not the case in Vic Two, in Vic Three, um, because if you do this, they're only going to go to the general in the, from that state region first of all. And also, if you put it on standby, which is like the the defending, right, the garrison thing or whatever, if you do that, they're only going to garrison in their home state. So you can't actually, let's say you have a North France, like Germany's invading you, right? If you mobilize South France HQ of uh, mobs and you put them on so garrison duty so they won't actually garrison the north they're only garrison the south that's their home state or home state region they won't yep. ever fight in the war thank you adam for the prime they won't actually fight in the war at all. only only if germany takes northern france and then tries to go into south france yeah then they'll yeah. fight can you but, transfer units from the theaters how long no, does it take and not um you what you can do though and the one way you can do it is if you have south french hq and you want to fight in the north and you, you assign them to a general so you assign all the southern you know france hq to a general all those units to a general then you say that general to say defend front northern france or something like that right the northern french german front that's how you need to do it if you don't do it with a the general they'll just sit there and not do anything or if you tell the general to stand by he will always go back to his home state region and just stay there he won't actually go to like the north or whatever where the fighting is mm. happening you specifically tell them to you know go to the specific front otherwise they just aren't going to do anything which isn't 
that big an issue, but it can be frustrating if you're trying to like, uh, let's say you're playing France and you want to make sure that you get your, like you want to spread it between different fronts, right? It's kind of a pain in the ass because you can't just like in V2, it's like you take your entire army in one stack, you need to split it up into like 25 different stacks and spread them to all every front, right? You can't do that so because you kind of have so to actually from. say, okay, so there's this many units in, in southern France, I have to split these individually, and this this many units in northern France, I have to split these units individually too. So it's a little, it's a little weird, I will say. Um, Doesn't but, sound to me like they've gotten rid of that annoyance of microing. They've that, that sounds like annoying micro. It, it is annoying micro, yeah. To be honest, like it, the, it's not like Victoria it's not Three micro, has annoying, annoying micro. micro. Thank you, Sacred Seal, for the prime. Is, Victoria I mean, Three does, has annoying micromanagement confirmed. I mean, it doesn't. That. It doesn't look like it's a bad game. Well, it's not. It's not like something that takes a ton of time to do, which is annoying. Maybe they'll add like some UI stuff that helps it, makes it easier. But it must have been annoying in this build anyway. Maybe they'll change it. It's like have to like deal with all this. They have to like split the different HQs. Like France is actually pretty easy. Like if you're playing Russia. Now that's a, that's a pain in the ass to mobilize everything because you have like all these fucking yeah. Siberia states. That's like two. You have like two battalions in a Siberian state, right? And you, and you need an entirely different new general for those two battalions in it on its own because you can't like you can't move those two battalions to a bigger state and then put it on a different general. You have to like put it on the the new general for that. Yeah, state say you're playing the Russian Empire, you want to add some battalions. Would you be able to move them to say the Azov region? Uh, wait, what? Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, Dejaru actually asked about. Let's say. Uh, let's say if you're France and you mm -hmm. conquered the Rhineland, would you? Is that a new big region to add troops to? Uh, that would be a new region, yeah. So that would be that would be its own state region. Let me see, because I'm pretty sure there's like there's um North France, right? I believe South France, and then there is the Rhine, or like I think it's, I can't remember if it's, if it's Rhine or West Germany, and then you got East Germany, right? So it's like split up like that. So like if you conquer that, that would be its own region, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so it's you, kind of, you have to create a new, that sounds like kind of normal, you know, you conquer a new region, you've got to put more troops Yeah, yeah, in. I mean, I mean that, that's not really a problem. The problem is just because they're all state-based only, you can't like, you can't like easily swap them around. Yeah, if you have a lot of it states. sounds to me like a problem might arise where the borders of states, the borders of these regions where you assign troops sort of coincide and interlink with different nations and land you annex. So let's yeah, say yeah, you're they, playing nations that are within the same region instead of yeah, um, on, like, along yeah. nice region borders like France and Prussia. Also, someone asked, yes, I am going to play, get Vic3, stream it and play it. Yes. I, yeah. But, uh, yeah. It, it, it definitely does seem like that is the case. Because, like, if you look on the state borders, you'll see they coincide quite nicely with the day one borders, right? Like, you have North France with Elsass in it as well. South France with the French borders. I think maybe, I think maybe Savoy is probably part of that. I can't remember exactly. But, like, the, the borders definitely coincide, like, really... You know, conveniently will with the day one borders, which yeah. is like, mm, you know, is I mean, it, is it like, like origins? Like, like uh, I mean, it, it, it makes sense, you know, well, why wouldn't they do it this way? It's just, yeah, I don't see why they would use this system. I think it'd be a better idea to just have like all the battalions in one pool and you just, you know, put them out as you want, like wherever you want to, in which general, but it's like kind of weirdly state region based. So it's like kind of. I mean, I guess about... with the game, it's not going to be set up so that much land is actually going to... I don't think the borders are going to shift that much. They're not intending for much war and much shifting of borders to happen in Vic 3. Yeah. But I guess I'm just thinking, obviously, if you're coming up with a mod like DoD, the things, you could probably change them, but I don't know. What about... Yeah, you, you can change them. What about regions? Too. What about regions? Like, I have a question, like, are they divided like in big two where you're like uh for example sardinia piedmont owns uh, nice and it's called piedmont is provence oh yeah so you can have split states um, i'm not sure if there's any big split states at the start of the game i think most states like not split at the start of the game right but you can split states um to a certain extent and it, it'll, it'll actually tell you if you click on the problem to say like incorporate state and then it's a split state onto that if it's a, a split state so yeah, you can you can split states. Although for my testing, it didn't seem like you actually split them on demand. It seems you can only do it with like, a, with what's it called, with like treaty ports and stuff. Although, mm -hmm. well, they may change that. It's hard to say. Like it, it, it would be it would probably be easier to change if they really wanted to. So but, for yeah. example, if you have a state with different cultures in it and a country who has them a culture. Oh yeah, so the cultures and since the pops are state based only you know there's like no province-based pops anymore 
at least some pretty wild stuff. Um, some pretty damn wild stuff uh, with the culture map mode, say the least. And uh, I, I can't show it, but let me tell you, it, it's wild because it, it it doesn't like it only calculates it like it calculates it dynamically. Like it like the game tries to think, okay, which states, which province within the state have this culture, but it doesn't actually know that because you know it isn't it isn't state based. Like it uh, province based, it's state based, right? So is it is it in a bad or a good way? Let's say. Uh, I think it's not very good. I think it would have been better with province-based pops, like in Big 2, and then have bigger provinces. I am not really a big fan of the state-based thing because it... Well, I mean, it, it, it both it both lacks representation with the actual, you know, historical culture regions. Like, you can't... Like, it's kind of hard to think that you can have, like, a, a Balkans where that's, like, mixed cultures, right? And, like, you can look that on the map and be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And there's some split cultures there, and you can see the province level. You can't really do that here. Like, uh... Because if you do, it'll look I'm weird. Coping, like, it'll... I'm coping. I'm thinking about like coping. regions like uh, South Tyrol or Istria, and I'm yeah. coping right now. Coping <laughs> right now. So he wants I'm... Italy to have them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I think I do think that um like the way it works right now can probably be fixed pretty easily. It's just that in this build, it just looks whack in the culture map mode. Although in general, I don't really like I don't really like the state-based pops for a lot of reasons, you know, this included. But you know, it is how it is. It's not really a deal breaker. It's just kind of a weird design decision. I wish they didn't do. I would have preferred to actually have province-based pops instead. So yeah. anyway, I didn't actually intend for this stream to end up with this vast amount of, you know, dumping of Victoria Three information from someone who's seen it. That's crazy. But I think I'm gonna, you know, wind that down now. Talk about yeah. just things in general, and then. Maybe we can have some other discussion and we can put it up as, in a different kind of format to get the information out there in a better way to more people at some point. Yeah. But what I'll do, I'll, I'll think of something. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hope we'll... Crazy, well, thanks for all the information. Yeah, no problem, man. Hopefully it, uh, it helps shed some light on how the game actually works, at least in development. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fucking hell. Uh... I wonder how... I think this information is all okay. I mean, we're not showing anything that's copyrighted. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's. I'm not... You know, I'm not going to show... Obviously, I wouldn't show any screenshots or anything. I mean, it's up to it's up to people to believe me if they believe I actually, you know, actually did see it, you know. That could be me. lying. <laughs> but, it's not. but there's also... But uh, liar. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the, the real root of the problem is obviously whoever leaked it. They're the fucking problem. Yeah, I don't even, got leaked. I don't actually even know who leaked it, like genuinely. And I know it's probably trying to cover for someone, but I, but I actually don't know, um, because the source that I actually, you know, the source that gave it to my friend who gave it to me, he apparently he doesn't even know who leaked it either. So you know, okay, like, careful. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know. but uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, man. no one knows the source. We don't want to know. We're just there's something for yeah. Paradox to sort out. I mean, Paradox are going to find out if they have someone leaking their stuff at this point. Even, I mean, people, they would have known before I put out my video. It was already yeah, spreading probably. around. I mean, and in crash reports, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and uh, there's that also... That was actually hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Like Parrish getting the crash report from like some random player without any... Yeah, I just imagine it, like it's just the, the person they have in their office who deals with uh, crash reports, just looking through, oh, EU4. What's the problem? Oh, another fucking Hoi 4 report. Uh, what's this one? Victoria? Oh, Victoria 2? Wait, wait, Victoria 3? Uh, <laughs> so there's been a mistake. <laughs> Emma! Emma! Uh, well, yeah, was, I mean, I, I'm imagining they probably, like, they probably saw this no certificate from the crash report. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I like, don't know. It's gotta be some, someone unknown at that point. There's gonna be some more certificate. Um, someone, oh, someone I, just... I just noticed, you know, someone, there's some stuff about this happening in some websites, some news, you know, news, gaming news or something. It's xputer.com. I haven't looked at this article. I mean, it seems like they're mostly just kind of, not exactly mainstream news, I would say, but, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. I, I didn't really, because I saw those two and I was like, I've never heard this website before. I don't know, it sounds like reliable stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, I've never heard of it. But I mean, this 
this is something to report on, I guess. Yeah, it's I mean... Call phone the BBC. Yeah. Quite important, obviously, because... You know, I, I, I honestly just, like, I know Paradox, they, they, they don't like leaks very much, understandably so. I just hope that they take, if they see this, they'll take the criticism and hopefully... Well, I, uh, I will say one thing, I didn't mention this in the video, but someone leaked Victoria, two, Victoria 3 on their forum on the day it was announced, before it was announced, do you know what I mean? Do you remember that? That was the, was it the, 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 the icon thing, or... What it was, was it? like an artwork, it was like the Victoria yeah, the artwork, 3 yeah. artwork icon yeah it was on the forum somewhere an accidental post too early mm. and the person who did that I, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying what their name is but it's someone who is like like in the like a, a mod on the victoria 3 discord it's like you know a, a, an yeah. employee and they're still there working some, <laughs> there are some theories that they did it intentionally to like drum up hype but maybe there's Absolutely. always that there's always that yeah. schizo aspect to it yeah <laughs> Maybe Funny. since if I mean we don't know the source of the leak, so even this one could theoretically a small chance be that, but it could be maybe. I mean, no, be insane like imagine you know, leaking your own game early to get up. But then where they leak, it just doesn't make. It's ridiculous that it would be an intentional leak to leak it to the people yeah. who hate the game. Well, quote yeah, unquote, I've seen to hate weird. the game. I don't really hate it, but yeah, like Victoria I Two. I don't honestly. Know. I could see myself playing this game in single player if it's like when it's done. Um, I just don't. I just think it's it's just not good for MP. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I, need I see myself play. playing it in single player. I don't see. It's, I don't know how fun. long I see myself playing it. That it's depends. Fun yeah. Game, fun yeah. Game like uh, rule, maybe. Yeah, I could. I could. Like, I wouldn't be against. I could go and play EU four in single player and have a bit of fun. And I could play Imperator. I could play CK three and have some fun. None of them really what like drag me to play. I'm not that interested, but they're there. No, I actually Maybe actually end up like that. Like uh, I enjoy uh, games like Stellaris and Brother Rome. I really enjoy them single player. Yeah, yeah. At this point, I'm just curious for when the game actually comes out. Like, what the differences are between the like the actual finished game and the the leak I got to see, because uh, like what did what, what what they fixed, you know, what they changed. I'm curious to see that going forward. I'm I think I think I've got my rule lawyer, but I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys, Keystone yeah. and Zombie. Thank you very much for all the information, no Zombie, especially yeah, no and problem. Keystone for the com uh, comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but um, but you have a good one, Spud, and uh, and you. Yeah. See, uh, see, see you. Guys. You, see you, guys. A good one. All right, I think my lawyer has showed up finally. Yes. Uh, so I did so I did a little bit of investigating. Uh, the person who took down your video is apparently somebody who works in the legal department of Paradox Interactive. I found I, their link. Yeah. Maybe we can connect to them. Maybe um, we can do our stuff ourselves by working on the inside. What are you suggesting? Uh, we work. We connect with them on LinkedIn. We oh right. I don't have a LinkedIn account. Do you? And then we, and then we leak Victoria Four. <laughs> Maybe we send. This is what we do, right? We take the leak Victoria Three. We plant it on Emma's computer, and <laughs> say that she was the one that leaked it. Or black. No, wait, wait, am I? Is this? Am I even allowed to joke about this shit? Blackmailer to take away my copyright strike. Is this? Can I actually joke about this? Like fucking hell. Uh, um. This is all a joke. This is a disclaimer. None of this is meant seriously. Please do not put car bombs into people's cars. Thank you. There are there are paradox lawyers outside my house. What do you actually get for a strike? Okay, so um, one copyright strike. If you get three copyright strikes, you get your channel terminated. Well, yes, I know that. And uh, they they disappear after three months. So if you get three within three months, you're fucked. Um, but nothing actually else happens. The video gets taken down. And I don't get any of the large amount of revenue I would have got from it. Uh, but that is what it is. I swear there was like something where you couldn't like live stream for like a week or something. Maybe that's two strikes. I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. I never saw anything about that. <laughs> right. The, the thing I actually want to ask you, my lawyer, about is 
uh, Call of Duty Zombies and World at War. Oh, yes. You're playing this. Well, you know, I've I'm seen... always free on um, the Lord's Day. Okay. And I think then. Friday's too now. I want to Then we have the later start date on Thursdays. I need some Victoria on Friday. I need to sub in the zombie game. Oh, yeah. I heard good things about that. See, because their games aren't poor as shit, like the PYR server. Well, we can't talk about that. Oh, oh, oh. You're my fucking so those, lawyer. Those legal NDAs apply, but not the yeah. Paradox ones. <laughs> well, they're a big evil corporation, and I'm a small fledgling YouTuber. Hey, hey, the article about you leaking Victoria 3 called you popular YouTuber Spudgun. Oh, You're the big man now. I'm glad they're calling me that. Just wait till they see the Imgur leaks of other people's comments. <laughs> um, what else is like? Oh yeah, so Call of Duty World at War and Black Ops and everything, they're all on sale. So I probably will end up buying one and playing some zombies. I didn't realize that Black Ops 3 is the same price as World at War. Yeah. Yeah. They all are. Like, fucking Black Ops 1 is, like, £15 as well. Yeah, so I'm not sure how far modding has gone. I know um, it's gone a lot in World of War. I don't know how far it's gone in Black Ops 3. I remember a few years ago it um started going somewhere, but I don't do you, know any of the results. Do you have Black Ops 3? No, but I could probably buy it. Yeah, that's the one. It's got a zombies pack. It's got loads of old zombies maps. Yeah, Zombie Chronicles. Like, I remember that in the yeah, um, that one. old Xbox. I think I might grab that. You get a lot of maps. You get Shino, Numa, Verukt. Nakhira, yeah, I think it has everything through Black Ops 1, 2, th 3. No, 1, 2 in World at War, I think. And Kino de Toten on Black Ops 1 is one of my fucking classic favorites. Yes. Love that one. And it's on Black Ops 3's Zombies Chronicles. Mm -hmm. And there's also loads of fucking Empire at War mods to play. Oh, and then, then we gotta get Republic Commando sometime. Play the lizard people. Well, that's for another day. <sighs> There's so many good classics. <laughs> you, did you see Spambot was trying to see if anyone wanted to play Victoria Revolutions? No, I didn't notice that. Victoria 3 has set us so far back, we're now playing Victoria 1. They actually Fuck. have um, a lot of cool mechanics. So, for instance, there's something called Colonial Wars in the game. Where they're kind of like wars that are just you can only fight in colonies. Oh my and god! They have, uh, Wait, that's fucking like, genius. They also have some features where you could like steal somebody's colonial outpost when you're at war with them, and I'm not sure what those do entirely, but I'm pretty sure it makes it easier to like colonize it later, or you just steal the colony. Colonial wars one... make complete fucking sense. That should be. There's like a bunch of other features. I think the only downside with the game is you have to micro pops more, like manually yeah. promote. Oh them. yeah, yeah. That's something I've never played and tried, and I should. There's content I there. own a copy of it, because when I bought Vic 2, like, four years ago, uh, it came with it in a bundle. It was just cheaper, because it came with the expansions. So, I have it. Maybe I think it has a 12-player multiplayer limit. Hmm. What else is there? Oh, any, any thoughts on the Victoria 3 leaks or anything you want to say? Um... So I remember on the announcement trailer, it said they were going to do Xbox uh, Game Pass for PC. So that leads me to think they might try to do a console port with CK3. I know the only way I'm ever um, playing Victoria 3 myself is through that subscription service. Because I got one of those for free that I haven't activated and I'm not <laughs> paying $60 for a mobile game. It's also like the first one that you get for like a, a pound or a dollar. Yeah, it's like... It's like what, like three dollars for three months or something ridiculous? I'm currently already paying for the Xbox Pass to play Halo. So I'm, yeah, it's a really um, good deal for the first like few months. Probably. I had a friend who did it. I guess I could just play Victoria Three on the Pass, and then if I hate it, I won't play it. I won't buy. Yeah, it. that's my plan, honestly. Although, I don't know if I'll make any content on it. Or any content at all, for that matter. Don't you want to make money? That is true. But then I have to learn how to play this game. I, do I really want another learning curve? Maybe I should just make CK3 videos. Well, from all the information and the dev diaries I've been paying up, keeping attention with, I've already got an insight into how to play the game. And the, the <laughs> I, I, I saw our, um, our anonymous leaker play it, and it did a... Uh... 
I don't know. It just didn't look like it's my kind of game. Like I, I, I guess, I guess I'd have to just go through the learning curve. I'm obviously gonna try it when it comes out, but the diplomatic play stuff seems like a little bit um confusing to say the least. Yeah, that shit. That whole aspect of it looks, you know, the diplomatic play in the war is just the worst aspects of it. But there's also there's loads of other shit going on that might yeah. it might redeem it if it works. I don't know. I'll definitely like give it a good like twenty hours, probably of just like failing at the game before I try. But I don't know. Like I feel like some stuff in the game will be done pretty well. Like I feel like the um the whole like slavery debate stuff in the early U.S. will be done pretty well. Yeah. But I feel like the formation of Germany will be like complete garbage. You're the only hope for the future of the Victoria community because I've already burned all the bridges with Paradox. I'm on their hit list. Their lawyer... <laughs> People are sending out the Imgur links of comments. Their lawyer has me on a list. Did I just hear my fucking... Uh, I don't know. So they fucking hate Having me. Having a so schizo moment? Only... Yes, I am. <laughs> you're the only hope because they, you haven't, like, they don't know you yet. If you make a good impression, you can get all the deals. Get the sponsorships. You know, I'm going to see if it works. But, like, a month before Victoria 3 comes out, I'm going to try to get a review copy. Well, I mean, I'm going to try as well. You might as well try. Yeah. Apparently, you just email their PR team and um, they either accept or deny it. Oh. There's some, like, if you Google it, like, there's some page where they have about it. If I, emailed, I don't know who they actually give it to. If I emailed their PR team, they're just going to reply with one block message gif or something. <laughs> no, we are not removing your strike. Well, it'll be removed in three months. I got a strike over uh, part 12 of the Airs to Aquitania series a few months ago. Oh, really? For what, a bit what of classical it? music by Universal Music Group. Damn. For some reason, my dispute didn't work that time, although they do always work. Yeah, just... I, I had some like annoying. It's not even like they review it and then um it goes away. Like I had to wait thirty days for one of mine. It's fucking annoying. Yeah, sometimes they leave it to the maximum month. You get a review copy, or I get a review copy. Like, uh, you cannot mention Spud Gun. You cannot mention Nurse Reno. No God of Cheese. No P U Y R. These are all hate signs. No bad <laughs> Frank. I need Nurse Reno's opinion on all this, but he's not around right now. He came back for Didn't a couple of days. Didn't he show up last week and then disappear again? He was here for a few days just checking in. Not enough time to host a game. When the world needed him most, he vanished. I think he said he's coming back in November. Yeah, he did say that. So For a Reno, game. Reno game in November confirmed. <laughs> you know, I completely will say my dislike of his mon, but I'm signing up for that campaign in November. It is yes. going to be pure gold. Yes. I hate the I hate the mod and I hate the rules, but just can't miss it. The personalities alone. Yeah. Oh. So maybe uh, we can do zombies. I'm getting on good Thursday, memories the of the Spambot game. Well, I'm uploading good memories one week at a time. With the occasional bad memory here and there, if you're lizard. Yeah. Oh god. Need to. We could play maybe zombies on Thursday. Okay, uh, I guess I'll have to buy the game and install it if you want to do Black Ops 3. Uh, I could get Black Ops 3 and or World at War. You know, I actually did a deep, like, was looking around for different, um, stuff in, like, the campaign mods. Because I figured, like, somebody had to make those. And some guy managed to port, like, the entire, like, a uh, Modern Warfare 2 level into the game. It's like, Whoa. what the fuck? <laughs> I know that in Black Ops 3, right, you, you play the old maps, but... By default in the game, you're playing with the Black Ops 3 weapons, but there are mods that give you the classic weapons for other games. So oh, you really? can get, essentially, the World at War experience on Black Ops 3, for all intents and yeah. purposes, I think. Although, you know, just playing classic World at War, though, you know, nothing beats it. Yeah, and, I, uh, I know, um, little food for thought, I know, like, Dempsey is World at War, and, like, I think one or two other people, like Olympian. So, uh, if you yeah. want to get a four-man, you could organize that. Yeah, yeah. There's... Although you need a lawyer to make sure he um is able to use his likeness. Uh, what Dempsey? Yes, you 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 need to pay for these people now. Uh, what's the these world keen personalities to? who don't upload in six months? Black Ops Three doesn't have Darisa, or people just call it Daris or Daris. 
They, uh, uh, I remember when the game came out, if you bought the season pass and then later released as its own DLC, I guess it's included in Chronicles. It was just called the giant. It's, it's literally not, the same map. It's not in Chronicles. It's in a more expensive, it's the same map, but it's like got more advanced story to the, the zombies. It war. just has like a different starting cutscene. That's it. <laughs> Fucking, but, uh, it's got Easter it was, eggs it was, as well. it was released at game launch rather than like a year after launch, like Zombies Chronicles was. So that's why it's um, I guess in a different pack. I think I actually want to get World at War because then you get all the Easter eggs and the fucking radios, everything as it was. I can, I'll, yeah. I'll probably get them both, but I want to. I'll play World at War first. The the mods are just so crazy. Like I remember, there's one map which is just like the equivalent of Moon, but it's all underwater. It's like a really like serious map and then like there's another one which is just the um the fucking town from spongebob and has like oh. a bunch of parkour and other random shit oh so yeah I, i'd have out. to look through um like some of the mod dbs again but there's like a bunch of like cool stuff like i remember like one of them added like a bunch of ai soldiers that are either like on your side or against you while also still being a zombies map so people have done oh. a lot of creative work like this stuff's been out for over 10 years yeah, something I haven't looked at at all since. I mean, I played all the Call of Duties on console when they were coming out, but since then, I haven't touched them, obviously. But now I want to go back and play some zombies because it's fucking nostalgic. <laughs> but yeah, I think a lot of people have World of War, so like, you could probably like find people pretty quick. Yeah. I don't know why they released modding for Black Ops 3, but not 1 and 2. Uh, I don't know. It seems like Black Ops 3 is the one where they've kind of included everything and they've gone back and put all the zombies maps in. It was very weird because they, like, so you know how Call of Duty had, like, that cycle where they released, like, a DLC every two months then abandoned the game? Uh, what? Call of Duty? Yeah, like, that's how their old development cycle was. Yeah, they added map packs. They, uh, with the Zombies Chronicles, I think it was, like, six months after the game died and they released that and everyone was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Hmm, I don't know. I, I, By the time Black Ops 3 came out, I wasn't really playing Call of Duty, I think. Oh, yeah. I remember there was, uh, so, like, you know how they kind of made the Easter eggs bigger and bigger? In Black Ops 3, they had, like, a bunch of, like, some of them ended with boss fights, some of them were, like, really big. And if you managed yeah. to complete all the Easter eggs, it would give you an extra bonus where you'd start with an extra weapon and extra points at the start of every new game you started. Oh. I think they got out of hand. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's so funny because nowadays, like, you'll see a video that tries to explain the story and it's like three hours long and then World at War was just like, here's some radios. Yeah. They never intended for it to go into a massive storyline like that. It was just some little ideas they threw in and some little memes. Yeah, like, I think the characters in World at War, the um, playable characters... Uh, we're just ripped out of the campaign. They're just taken models. Yeah, they're just one. So like Tank Dempsey, faction. this guy who talks with like this super deep and like badass voice, is like a twenty-year-old kid in like the in the Pacific campaign. He's like kind of a wimp. Yeah, they're just like stereotypes from each of the four factions. Yeah. Anyway, I think I need to talk more about Victoria Three and modding. Not modding. The uh, stuff. I have no longer got my service. Need my services of my lawyer right now. I go right. back and see to another client. Please client's. stop oh, uploading oh, paradox leaked Always content. I, you know how many cease and desist I have on my desk right now. I just can't fucking help myself. We're, we're not done until I say we're done. <laughs> oh, I have to go file some more fucking reports on this. Have fun. Keep Emma off my ass. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Hey, oh, Batman, thank you for the year. You don't hit a year. And someone asked me if I'm going to play EU4 anytime soon. No, not really. But, I mean, if someone on any of the Vic2 servers I'm on hosts a, an EU4 multiplayer game as a meme, I would play it. I won't deny that. I would play it. Holy shit, yeah, 12 months in a, is a year. Yeah. The things we're uncovering on this stream. For those of you who are just t tuning into the stream, like lately, I'd, we were just talking about Black Ops uh, Call of Duty Zombies because I want to play that. Oh, it's Lord Lambert! 
Ah, Lord Lambert. Look, <laughs> Lord Lambert's been sucking the pee pee of Paradox, and and I haven't, and I've got the fucking scoop of the century. Yeah. Is there any chance you could create a stage? Yeah, oh yeah, I, I noticed you suggested that before. I've never created a stage. I don't know how they work, but I am interested in checking them out. I should check. I should figure out how they work and do one in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll stick around a little bit longer and then I will head off from the stream. That has been very interesting and insightful. I didn't expect Zombie to have that much info and give that much info. Like, fucking hell, that was crazy. Oh no, this isn't a podcast. This is not a podcast. I reject that. Do not use that word. This isn't a podcast. This is a stream. This is a... Um, a it's, it's a podcast, isn't it? It's a fucking podcast. Fuck. What is that, Platinum? Platinum Sun, what are you talking about? Um, you gave up on Vic 3, you not covered the DDs. Oh, really? The Warfare? Oh. Even I'm going to give it a chance when it comes out and play it and everything. But I mean, until this leak stuff, I actually I wasn't paying attention. So I, I was with, right with you until this leak stuff happened and this piqued my interest. Platinum is making some comment, apparently, with a... Uh, that's probably not a serious thing, it's probably just a copy-pasta, but... You're saying that... Imagine being a Paradox employee with these assholes going around and harassing them. I do not want any harassment of Paradox employees. Don't do it. I haven't even... I, if anyone's doing that, they're just an individual idiot going off and being ridiculous. Like... And I got this copy, copyright strike from a person, you know, the name comes up on the copyright strike, everyone can see it. I'm not giving away a name or anything that shouldn't be given away. Spudcast Shop. Just because it's a perfect name that goes well with my name, it's not happening. All right, Lambert, I get you. I'll be doing the same pretty much. Yeah, I was going to just do that. Do not harass Paradox employees. Any harassment against Paradox employees is absolutely condemned by me. Don't do it. A lot of people have been talking about these journal entries. That's a dev diary that I didn't read and I think they're quite important. I might check that one and have a look at what that is because it's kind of replacing decisions and a lot of information in there. I don't know exactly how it works. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I can release Victoria 3 myself. I can't take that away from Paradox. I might have taken away the first gameplay reveal, like the greedy, small content creator I am. Uh, but how much info do we have in this leak that isn't available in the diaries? Loads. Uh, if you didn't catch what Zombie was talking about, everything he said is just kind of new. Half of what he was saying, I don't know. Some of it was already in the dev diaries, but... You need to go back and watch the VOD and watch that part of the stream. Yeah, I should be making con I should be making videos about what was said by Zombie about the things he knows and is seen from other people's Victoria Three gameplay. Now earlier in the stream, I said I had an idea about mad a mad piece of content I could do, which has been scuppered by the copyright strike, and I can't do it. Spud, will you acquire leaked version yourself? No, I will not. Nope. Do you guys want to hear my idea for what I was going to do on Thursday? 
Do you think you'll keep a similar format of game analysis for Vicky 3 series? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If it's possible. Bowel Shaking Earthquake says no. Bowel Shaking Earthquake has donated to this channel today and he says no. He's got a financial investment in me. I think I trust him more than you all, the rest of you. The default position for my Victoria 3 content is this is going to be a continuation of my Victoria 2 content. Hey, that's a very inappropriate question, Duro. Can I get a moderator in here? He's harassing me. I want to hear it and then annoy you that you won't do it. <laughs> Spudcoin. <laughs> Spudcoin is the name, Luna. Oh, there's, there's no final verdict on what the leak was. I have no idea. No one knows. That's an internal paradox matter now. So, on Thursday, um, what's his name? Martin Anward? He is going to do a live AAR of an, a playthrough as the Ottoman Empire. So, he was planning to do that. It is a set time, big event. He's going to do screenshot heavy, lots of screenshots from the game, documenting his playthrough as the Ottomans in a game. Head developer. That's what he's going to do on Thursday. So, we've all got that, right? Check that out if you want, sure. You can all watch that. A live of Victoria 3 AAR from screenshots. So now that you're aware that he's doing that on Thursday at a set time, what do you think my plan was for Thursday? He was going to do screenshots of Victoria 3. What did you think my plan was before the Vicky 3 footage got a copyright strike for Thursday? You can all put, put it together in your heads already, what I was planning. It's a ridiculous, crazy, and horrible thing to do. And I will not be doing it. I'm not going to lower myself to that. I was planning to get footage of um, someone playing Victoria 3 as the Ottomans and make a video and release it at the same time that he's going to do his live AAR of screenshots. Imagine what could have been. I've, no, streaming it seems like the worst idea possible on Twitch or anything. Live Vic3 MP session. Getting more viewers than the official Paradox streams isn't that hard. Uh, Tommy K does it on a regular basis. So do other content creators, I think. Doesn't it crash every second? I think someone somewhere got a better version than what I saw, or a more stable thing than what I saw and got the and did in the video. Zombie was talking about it. Zombie got some pretty intimate views, I think, of the game. Spend your Thursday editing the Venice series. Yes, I will be editing the Venice series a bit more this evening, tomorrow, Wednesday. Thursday, and if I need to, Friday morning as well. It's going to be back to the Venice series. I did a bit of it this morning, of course. My Victoria 3 leak video is still up this morning. Do you feel like population will be more or less important aspect of Vic 3? I don't know. It should. It's going to be what the entire game is based on, so it should still be as important. I think it will be. Oh, you're a Venetian yourself. Glad to hear it. Just like, maybe you know Keystone, personally. I don't think anyone's working on any balance, uh, multiplayer balance mods for the leaked version. I don't think that's happening.
Maybe bowel shaking earthquake. Maybe. Well, I think we're going to wrap up this discussion pretty soon. Two hours, nice solid amount of streaming. If you need a rando in a third world country to stream Vicky 3 for you, I am your guy. I'll keep that in mind. Alright Night Stalker, thank you for your 10 gifted subs again by the way. Sing us a goodbye song, no. This isn't karaoke night. That's tomorrow. No, it's not tomorrow either. It's it's not happening. The first ever, the first and final Spudcast is ending. I feel like the way things are going, I should export this stream to the main channel instead of my archive channel, to be honest. I think that would be a good move. I mean... Or, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But I think exporting it to the main channel will just make it more visible, make more people see it, which is... I just, you know, want more people to get the information I'm getting. I want to spread the word. I will not sing on stream for any amount of money. Do not give me money for singing. Just give me money to support me. Yeah, I should edit the stream down to make Zombies Information a video for 10 minutes. But that is, uh, nah, that's so much editing. Since there's nothing visual on the stream, I'd have to edit the visuals of that 100% by using Dev Diary screenshots and everything. Editing this down to a video about that would take ages. And I've got the Venice series to do. You should do this more unironically. You're right. This was a good stream. And I'm def I want to, I'm going to do uh, Call of Duty Zombies on Thursday. I want to stream that with Weevil. That's another thing I'm going to do. Vic 2 gameplay, but we're talking about Vic 3. I feel like that's just the, such typical clickbait YouTuber thing to do. Am I really above that after my Vic 3 leak video? No. But streaming, like putting Vic 2 gameplay, I don't have any Vic 2 gameplay to put into a video. That's not, that's not what I do with my, that's not what I do with my Vic 2 footage. I take my Vic 2 footage and make epic uh, long stories out of it. I don't have any just, I don't have any idle Vic 2 footage to just shove to fill a video. Top 10 Victoria 3 exploits. I think there's plenty of other Paradox content creators who do that Some sort of thing. Some men just want to be out of sync. Sing, like I said, I will, if you, if you want to refund that donation, you, you, you're entirely uh, entitled to refund it. I'm not saying it. Play the Spambot outro. I don't think I have the Spambot outro on its own on an audio file. I actually use a piece of uh, a Victoria 2 session. I wish I had Pie Chucker to edit that, uh, edit Zombies Info. Uh, channel points. Channel points don't give me money, Lunar. Why would I make that what's going to make me sing? Right, I think we've covered everything we're going to cover. Uh, thanks for the five dollars, though, Tyrus. Thank you. And I think there's no other pressing issues to discuss. I think we will end the stream. Someone will get there with the amount of amazing bets that I do, Lunar. Famous internet micro celebrity Spud Gun. Yeah, that's me.
All right. I'm going to try and get a Victorious 2 stream on Friday, remember, after my video. I'm going to sub in the zombie game. I heard Greece is open. There might be Greece on Friday, guys. You need to do more bets, but that's up to my mods. I just don't have very good moderator coverage on this channel, on the streams. I'm going to be in your sphere. Are you the UK? France? You're not going to help me against the Ottomans? This is the zombie game, yeah? Not the Swat Gunner game. No naval cap, sure, yeah, I think that's it. UK helped auto, it's it's over. It's genuine it's over. I'm rage I'm rage I'm rage quitting that Greece game now. I'm rage quitting the zombie game. I'm not subbing it. I'm done. I'm fucking done with that game. Crap, dead campaign, dead campaign. So, one more thing. I'm very close to 4,000 members on my Discord. So if any of you are watching and you're not yet in the Discord, go ahead and join right now. I I'm going to watch the Welcome channel, and I want to see at least one person fucking join the Discord. The link is in exclamation mark Discord. I'm waiting. What's the member list? There, we got one. Someone joined. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the Discord. We are currently on 3,913 members. So we are a mere 87 away from 4,000. If 87 of you aren't on the Discord right now, get in. Is that, that that's you, Judas, yeah. Is the exclamation mark Discord command working? Um. And another one joined. And another. Yes, yeah, see, it works. Maybe you should unban 87 people. Maybe I should do another... Um, what's the word? There's a thing you can do to get rid of loads of inactive accounts. It, like, it gets rid of like 100 accounts that are unused. Wow, I got a lot of people there, actually. Uh, what's up to now? Wait, the number didn't update. Oh. So we'll never know. It's like it's like my sub count on Twitch doesn't update for a while. Okay, right, that's it, guys. I'm going to stop rambling on about nothing. If you thought me rambling on for 12 minutes in that video was too much, just wait till you watch this stream. Two hours of it. Although about 20 minutes of it was a solid zombie portion of rambling, which gave me a, a much-needed break from the rambling. All right, guys, thank you very much for supporting the channel. And uh, I'm going to stream again on Thursday and then Friday. So, have a nice day everyone. Very much appreciate all the following and the support. Let's keep it all going. You as well, Aerio Batman. Cheerio everyone. I'm not going to be singing the goodbye song. It's going to be uh, just some piano. There you go. <laughs>